Across millennia, civilizations spanning the globe have meticulously woven intricate tapestries of divine beings, each endowed with distinct powers, personas, and legendary feats. From Celtic mythology to the illustrious peaks of Mount Olympus in Greek mythology and enigmatic domains of Hindu, Norse, Egyptian, and beyond, the narratives surrounding these mythical deities persist as enduring sources of fascination and wonder. In these episodes of Gods and Goddesses, we undertake a thorough examination traversing diverse mythologies, poised to illuminate the captivating sagas of gods and goddesses. Through meticulous exploration, we shall delve into their celestial exploits, peeling back the layers of mystique veiling their eternal realms. Let's start the journey. This is episode one. Dagda, the mighty all-father of Celtic mythology. Within the intricate tapestry of Celtic mythology, Dagda, esteemed as the all-father, a divine entity renowned for his profound power, sagacity, and enigmatic attributes. Dagda emerges from the primordial chaos as one of the Tuatha Dé Danann, the divine race of pre-Christian Ireland. Within this divine hierarchy, he occupies a central position, often depicted as the chief or father figure among the gods. His name, which translates to the good god or the great god, encapsulates his essential nature as a benevolent and powerful deity. As the All-Father, Dagda embodies a multitude of roles within the pantheon. He is the god of fertility, the harvest, and abundance, responsible for ensuring the prosperity of the land and its people. Yet, he is also a warrior of unmatched strength and valor, defending his kin against external threats and upholding the divine order. Moreover, Dagda assumes the mantle of a wise chieftain and a skilled artisan, possessing knowledge of the arcane arts, music, and craftsmanship. Dagda's portrayal in Celtic mythology is marked by a distinctive set of attributes and symbols that underscore his divine status and multifaceted character. Foremost among these is his legendary club, an immense weapon capable of both destruction and restoration. This club, which he wields with ease, serves as a potent symbol of his martial prowess and his role as a protector of his people. Dagda is often depicted as a figure of immense appetite, consuming vast quantities of food and drink with insatiable gusto. This aspect of his character reflects his association with abundance, feasting, and the cycle of life and death. Furthermore, he is frequently depicted as a figure of great virility and fertility, embodying the generative forces of nature and the perpetuation of the divine lineage. Throughout Celtic mythology, Dagda is credited with a myriad of significant exploits and adventures, each showcasing his divine power, cunning, and wisdom. Among his most renowned feats is the acquisition of the mystical cauldron known as the Cauldron of Plenty or the Undri which possesses the ability to provide unlimited sustenance and healing to those who partake of its contents. Another legendary tale recounts Dagda's encounter with the formidable Fomorian warrior, Crydenbell, whom he defeats in single combat using his mighty club. This victory not only demonstrates Dagda's prowess as a warrior, but also symbolizes the triumph of divine order over chaos and tyranny. Moreover, Dagda plays a pivotal role in the pivotal battle of Mag Twired, where the Tuatha Dé Dan and clash with their adversaries, the Fomorians, for control of Ireland. In this epic confrontation, Dagda's strategic brilliance and martial prowess prove instrumental in securing victory for his kin, cementing his status as a legendary hero and leader. Despite the passage of time and the transition to Christianity, Dagda's legacy endures in the folklore, art, and cultural heritage of Ireland and the Celtic diaspora. His image and symbolism continue to resonate with modern audiences, inspiring artists, writers, and musicians to reinterpret and reimagine his myths for contemporary audiences. Moreover, Dagda's role as a guardian of the land and its people remains a potent motif in the environmental and conservation movements reminding us of the importance of stewardship and respect for the natural world. Morrigan, 
Morrigan, the enigmatic goddess of Celtic mythology, embodies the essence of power, mystery, and sovereignty. As one of the most complex and intriguing figures in Celtic pantheon, the origins of Morrigan are shrouded in the mists of time, intertwined with the ancient Celtic beliefs and rituals. Derived from the old Irish word Morrigu, meaning Phantom Queen or Great Queen, Morrigan's earliest manifestations are found in the mythological cycles of Ireland. However, her roots may extend even further back, possibly originating from pre-Celtic goddesses associated with sovereignty and war. Throughout the centuries, Morrigan evolved alongside Celtic society, adapting to changes in religious practices, social structures, and political landscapes. She became synonymous with sovereignty, fate, and the cycle of life and death, embodying both the nurturing and destructive aspects of nature. Over time, Morrigan's complex character was shaped by various cultural influences, including indigenous Celtic beliefs, Roman occupation, and Christianization. One of the most distinctive features of Morrigan is her triple aspect, symbolizing the threefold nature of sovereignty, battle, and prophecy. As the triple goddess, Morrigan assumes different forms and functions, each reflecting a different facet of her divine essence. Firstly, she is often depicted as the washer at the ford, a foreboding figure who washes the armor and clothes of warriors before their impending deaths in battle. This aspect of Morrigan embodies the role of fate and destiny, guiding mortals towards their inevitable ends. Secondly, Morrigan is portrayed as the warrior goddess, taking to the battlefield alongside heroes and kings. In this aspect, she inspires courage, strength, and prowess in battle, while also reveling in the chaos and bloodshed of war. Finally, Morrigan is associated with prophecy and sovereignty, wielding her powers of foresight to shape the fate of individuals and nations. As the guardian of sovereignty, she bestows rulers with legitimacy and power, while also challenging their authority through trials and tribulations. Together, these three aspects form a triad of divine influence, shaping the destinies of mortals and gods alike. In the rich tapestry of Irish mythology, Morrigan plays a central role in the mythological cycles, particularly the Ulster cycle and the mythological cycle. Within these epic tales, she appears as both ally and antagonist to the heroes and gods, driving the narrative forward with her cunning schemes and prophetic visions. In the Ulster Cycle, Morgan is closely associated with the hero C.U. Chulin, whom she both aids and opposes throughout his legendary exploits. As his lover, she offers him her protection and guidance, yet she also tests his courage and loyalty through various trials and challenges. In the mythological cycle, Morrigan's presence is felt in the tales of the Tuatha Dé Danann, the mythic ancestors of the Irish people. As a member of this divine race, she participates in their struggles for supremacy against the Fomorians and other supernatural foes. Her actions shape the course of these ancient conflicts, influencing the fate of gods and mortals alike. The interactions between Morrigan and other mythological figures offer profound insights into Celtic cosmology, society, and worldview. Through her alliances and rivalries, Morrigan embodies the intricate balance between chaos and order, life and death, creation and destruction. Her relationships with mortal heroes such as C.U. Chulin and King Conchobar illustrate the complex dynamics between gods and humans, highlighting themes of loyalty, betrayal, and destiny. Similarly, her interactions with other deities, such as the Dagda and Luf, reveal the hierarchical structure of the Celtic pantheon and the divine powers at play. Furthermore, Morrigan's role as a shape-shifter and mistress of transformation underscores the fluidity of identity and perception in Celtic mythology. Like the shifting seasons and phases of the moon, she embodies the cyclical nature of existence, constantly evolving and adapting to new circumstances. Beyond the realms of myth and legend, Morrigan's influence extends into various aspects of Celtic culture, including religion, folklore, and art. Her image appears in ancient artifacts, 
such as the Tainbul Quelnge and the Book of Leinster, as well as in medieval manuscripts and oral traditions. In Celtic religion, Morgan was venerated as a goddess of sovereignty and fertility, invoked in rituals to ensure bountiful harvests and successful hunts. Her associations with war and prophecy also made her a patroness of warriors and seers, offering protection and guidance in times of conflict and uncertainty. In folklore and folk tradition, Morrigan's legacy lives on in the form of fairy tales, ballads, and superstitions. She is often depicted as a mysterious figure, wandering the countryside in search of souls to claim or fortunes to foretell. Her presence is felt in the eerie landscapes of Ireland, where ancient burial mounds and sacred sites are said to be her dwelling places. In the modern era, Morrigan continues to inspire artists, writers, and scholars with her timeless allure and enigmatic persona. Her image appears in contemporary literature, music, and visual art, as creators seek to reinterpret and reimagine her mythic legacy for new audiences. In literature, authors such as Marion Zimmer Bradley and Morgan Lywellyn have incorporated Morgan into their novels, weaving her into epic tales of Celtic fantasy and historical fiction. Similarly, musicians and composers have drawn inspiration from her mythic themes and motifs, crafting haunting melodies and evocative lyrics that evoke her mystical presence. In popular culture, Morgan has become a symbol of female empowerment and autonomy, resonating with audiences seeking to reclaim ancient goddess archetypes in modern contexts. From video games and graphic novels to fashion and merchandise, her image has been appropriated and reinterpreted in myriad ways, reflecting the enduring appeal of Celtic mythology in the contemporary world. Bridget, Bridget, Bridget. Or bride, she embodies the essence of creativity, fertility, healing, and poetry. Her presence is woven into the fabric of Celtic culture, from the earliest oral traditions to the Christianized narratives that followed. Bridget's origins are shrouded in the mists of time, with her roots reaching back into the prehistoric landscape of Ireland. She is believed to have been worshipped by the Celts long before the arrival of Christianity, her cult intertwined with the rhythms of nature and the cycles of the seasons. As a goddess, Bridget defies easy categorization, blending attributes of both pagan deities and Christian saints. Scholars speculate that Bridget may have been derived from an ancient pantheon of mother goddesses, embodying aspects of sovereignty, fertility, and craftsmanship. Over time, her mythology evolved and adapted, assimilating influences from other cultures and belief systems. With the spread of Christianity across Ireland, Bridget underwent a transformation, becoming associated with Saint Bridget, one of Ireland's patron saints. Bridget is a goddess of many talents, each aspect of her persona reflecting different facets of the human experience. She is often depicted as a triple deity, embodying the triple aspects of maiden, mother, and crone, a motif echoed in various mythologies around the world. As the goddess of poetry and inspiration, Bridget ignites the creative spark within mortals, bestowing the gift of eloquence and artistic expression. Her association with healing and fertility links her to the life-giving forces of the natural world, nurturing both body and soul. Furthermore, Bridget is revered as a guardian of the hearth and home, symbolizing the warmth and sustenance of domestic life. Her sacred flame, tended by priestesses in ancient times, represents the eternal flame of knowledge and enlightenment. Bridget's connection to fire underscores her role as a purifying force, burning away impurities and ushering in transformation and renewal. Bridget's iconography is rich with symbolism, each emblematic of her divine attributes and spheres of influence. The flame, perhaps the most potent symbol associated with Bridget, represents the eternal fire of inspiration and illumination. In ancient times, her sacred flame was tended by priestesses at Kildare, a practice that endured well into the Christian era. The cross, known as Bridget's cross, is another prominent symbol, 
believed to ward off evil and bring blessings to the household. Other symbols associated with Bridget include the cauldron, symbolizing nourishment and abundance, and the anvil, representing craftsmanship and creativity. Additionally, Bridget is often depicted with elements of the natural world, such as flowers, grains, and animals, underscoring her connection to the cycles of life and the fertility of the earth. Bridget's influence extends far beyond the realm of mythology, permeating every aspect of Celtic culture and society. In ancient Ireland, festivals honoring Bridget marked the changing of the seasons, celebrating the onset of spring and the return of life to the land. These celebrations, such as Imbolc, were marked by feasting, storytelling, and rituals aimed at invoking Bridget's blessings for the year ahead. Moreover, Bridget's cult persisted into the Christian era, albeit in a transformed guise. Saint Bridget, revered as one of Ireland's patron saints, inherited many of the attributes and associations of her pagan predecessor. Churches and monasteries dedicated to Saint Bridget were established across Ireland, ensuring her enduring presence in the hearts and minds of the faithful. Bridget's legacy endures to this day, her presence felt in the landscapes of Ireland and beyond. Her mythology continues to inspire artists, poets, and storytellers who draw upon her timeless wisdom and grace. Furthermore, Bridget remains a figure of reverence for modern pagans and neo-pagans who seek to reconnect with the ancient traditions of the Celts. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in Bridget and Celtic spirituality fueled by a growing appreciation for the interconnectedness of humanity and the natural world. Through rituals, ceremonies, and celebrations, devotees honor Bridget's memory, keeping alive the flame of her legacy for future generations to cherish. Sernanos Sernanos, a figure shrouded in the mists of ancient Celtic mythology, has captivated scholars, historians, and enthusiasts alike for centuries. Often depicted as a horned deity, he embodies the essence of nature, fertility, and the wild. Despite his prevalence in Celtic iconography, the true nature of Cernunnos remains elusive, obscured by the passage of time and the scarcity of primary sources. The origins of Cernunnos trace back to the Celtic cultures of Iron Age Europe, particularly Gaul and Britain. The etymology of his name remains a subject of debate with interpretations ranging from horned one to horned god. Scholarly investigations link Cernunnos to the Proto-Celtic Kernu, or Carno-Dash, signifying horn or antler, suggesting his association with wildlife and fertility. Cernunnos emerged as a prominent deity during the Gallo-Roman period, where his imagery was often depicted alongside Roman deities like Mercury and Apollo, indicating syncretic influences. The spread of Celtic culture and trade networks facilitated the dissemination of Cernunno's cult, leaving traces of his worship across various regions of Europe. The iconography of Cernunno's predominantly features a horned or antlered figure seated in a meditative posture, holding various symbols of power and fertility. Notable representations include the famous Gundestrup cauldron where Cernunnos is depicted as a central figure surrounded by animals and symbols of abundance. Other depictions showcase him with torques, animals, and sometimes accompanied by a serpent or a ram. Interpretations of Cernunnos' imagery vary, with some scholars associating his antlers with regenerative powers or divine sovereignty, while others view them as symbols of his connection to the wilderness and the animal kingdom. The diversity of his representations underscores the multifaceted nature of his character and significance within Celtic cosmology. Cernunnos embodies a myriad of attributes and associations, reflecting his role as a liminal figure bridging the human and divine realms. As the Lord of the Wild, he presides over the untamed forces of nature, embodying fertility, abundance, and the cycle of life. His antlers symbolize virility and regeneration, while his affinity with animals underscores his role as their protector and guide. Moreover, Cernunnos is often linked with the underworld and the afterlife, 
guiding souls on their journey through the realms of existence. This association with death and rebirth further highlights his transformative nature and his role in the cosmic order of the universe. While Celtic mythology lacks extensive written records, several mythological narratives and folklore hint at Cernunno's significance within the pantheon. Stories often depict him as a shapeshifter, assuming various forms to interact with humans and gods alike. One prevalent motif involves Cernunno's bestowing wisdom or blessings upon mortals in exchange for their reverence and respect for the natural world. Additionally, Cernunno's is sometimes associated with the Celtic hero cycle, where he aids protagonists on their quests or imparts crucial knowledge necessary for their success. His role as a guardian of the forest and a harbinger of the wild reinforces his status as a divine protector and guide for those who seek his favor. The worship of Cernunno's encompassed a diverse array of rituals and ceremonies, often conducted in sacred groves or natural settings closely associated with the wilderness. Offerings of food, drink, and precious items were made to appease the deity and seek his blessings for fertility, prosperity, and protection. Rituals honoring Cernunno's likely included elements of animal sacrifice, symbolic acts of communion with the divine, and communal feasting to celebrate the cyclical rhythms of nature. Additionally, votive offerings in the form of sculptures, jewelry, and coins have been unearthed at archaeological sites associated with Celtic settlements, indicating the fervent devotion accorded to this horned god. Despite the decline of Celtic paganism following the spread of Christianity, the legacy of Cernunno's endures in various forms within contemporary culture. Neo-pagan movements, such as Wicca and Druidry, have revived interest in Celtic deities, including Cernunno's, as symbols of nature, spirituality, and reverence for the earth. Furthermore, Cernunno's imagery has permeated popular culture, appearing in literature, art, and media as a symbol of untamed wilderness and primal energy. His influence extends beyond the realms of mythology, inspiring individuals to reconnect with the natural world and embrace the inherent sacredness of all life. Now let's dive into Olympian gods and goddesses of Greek mythology. Apollo In the vast pantheon of Greek mythology, few gods command as much admiration, fascination, and reverence as Apollo. The god of light, music, poetry, healing, and prophecy. Apollo embodies the multifaceted nature of the human experience and serves as a symbol of enlightenment, creativity, and divine order. Apollo is one of the twelve Olympian deities, born to Zeus, the king of the gods, and Leto, a Tetanus. His twin sister, Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, is his constant companion. The circumstances of Apollo's birth are shrouded in myth, as Leto endured a lengthy and perilous labor after being pursued relentlessly by the jealous Hera, Zeus's wife. Eventually, Leto found refuge on the floating island of Delos, where Apollo and Artemis were born beneath a palm tree. From his infancy, Apollo exhibited extraordinary abilities and attributes. He was often depicted as a handsome young man with golden hair and radiant features, symbolizing the brilliance and vitality of the sun. As the god of light and the sun, Apollo is associated with illumination, enlightenment, and the passage of time. His chariot, drawn by fiery steeds, traverses the sky each day, bringing light and warmth to the world. Beyond his solar aspect, Apollo is revered for his diverse portfolio of domains. He is the patron of music and poetry, renowned for his skill with the lyre, a stringed instrument he received from Hermes in exchange for the caduceus, a symbol of peace. Apollo's musical prowess is celebrated in countless myths and legends, underscoring the transformative power of art and creativity. Additionally, Apollo is revered as a healer and a harbinger of prophecy. His sanctuary at Delphi, located on the slopes of Mount Parnassus, served as a sacred site where individuals sought guidance, healing, and insight from the Pythia, the priestess who served as Apollo's oracle. 
The prophecies uttered at Delphi were highly esteemed throughout the ancient world and influenced significant decisions in politics, warfare, and personal affairs. The myths surrounding Apollo are as diverse and captivating as the facets of his character. Among the most famous is the tale of Apollo and Python, a monstrous serpent born from the remnants of Gaia, the earth goddess. In a display of divine heroism, Apollo slew Python with his bow and arrows, establishing his dominion over Delphi and earning the title of Pythian Apollo. This myth symbolizes the triumph of order over chaos and underscores Apollo's role as a guardian of civilization and divine justice. Another prominent myth involves Apollo's ill-fated romance with Daphne, a nymph who spurned his advances and was transformed into a laurel tree to escape his pursuit. Despite his divine status, Apollo experiences the agony of unrequited love, highlighting the vulnerability and capriciousness of the gods. The laurel tree, forever associated with Apollo, becomes a symbol of poetic inspiration and victory, adorning the brows of triumphant heroes and scholars. Apollo's relationships with mortals also feature prominently in Greek mythology, showcasing both his benevolence and his capacity for wrath. In the tragic tale of Niobe, a boastful queen who offended the gods with her arrogance, Apollo and Artemis exact a swift and merciless vengeance, slaying Niobe's children and transforming her into a weeping stone. This myth serves as a cautionary tale against hubris and emphasizes the consequences of defying divine authority. Throughout antiquity, Apollo's image and attributes were widely depicted in art, literature, and religious iconography. The laurel wreath, symbolic of victory and poetic inspiration, adorns his head in countless sculptures and paintings, serving as a visual testament to his divine favor. The lyre, his cherished musical instrument, is often depicted alongside him, evoking the harmonious beauty of his melodies. As the god of light and prophecy, Apollo is frequently associated with the sun, depicted riding his chariot across the sky or crowned with rays of golden light. His connection to Delphi is symbolized by the Omphalos, a sacred stone representing the navel of the world, which was housed within the sanctuary's precincts. Offerings of laurel leaves, symbolic of Apollo's victory over Python, adorned the temple and were presented to victorious athletes and poets during the Pythian Games, held in Apollo's honor. The worship of Apollo was widespread throughout the ancient Greek world, with sanctuaries and temples dedicated to him in major cities and remote rural regions alike. The most renowned of these sanctuaries was the Oracle of Delphi, where pilgrims from across the Mediterranean sought guidance and purification through rituals and sacrifices. The Pythian Games, held every four years, attracted competitors and spectators from far and wide fostering a sense of unity and reverence for Apollo's divine patronage. Various cultic practices and rituals were associated with Apollo, including purifications, him singing, and theatrical performances celebrating his myths and attributes. In addition to Delphi, Apollo was venerated at other sacred sites, such as Delos, Delos, and Kleros, each with its own distinct traditions and customs. The cult of Apollo also spread beyond Greece, influencing religious practices in neighboring cultures and civilizations. The legacy of Apollo extends far beyond the boundaries of ancient Greece, permeating art, literature, philosophy, and religion throughout the ages. The Renaissance witnessed a revival of interest in classical mythology, with artists and scholars drawing inspiration from Apollo's imagery and ideals. The Enlightenment era, with its emphasis on reason, inquiry, and artistic expression, embraced Apollo as a symbol of intellectual illumination and human potential. In modern times, Apollo continues to captivate the imagination and inspire creative endeavors in various fields. His myths and symbols appear in literature, music, and popular culture serving as allegories for the human condition and timeless themes of love, beauty, and transcendence. Moreover, 
The enduring legacy of Delphi as a site of pilgrimage and contemplation underscores Apollo's enduring relevance as a symbol of wisdom and insight. Athena. Athena the goddess of wisdom, strategy, and warfare. Revered as one of the principal Olympian deities, Athena's influence transcends mere divine hierarchy. She embodies a complex array of attributes that have captivated minds for millennia. From her birth from the head of Zeus to her pivotal role in epic tales such as the Trojan War, Athena's presence in Greek mythology is both omnipresent and enigmatic. To understand Athena's character fully, one must first examine her origins within Greek mythology. According to the most prevalent myth, Athena sprang fully grown and armored from the forehead of her father, Zeus, after he swallowed her mother, Metis, the goddess of wisdom and craft, fearing that a child from her would overthrow him. This extraordinary birth established Athena as a parthenogenetic deity, symbolizing her independence and intellect. Despite her singular birth, Athena's lineage is complex and interconnected within the Greek pantheon. As the daughter of Zeus, she is counted among the Olympian gods and holds a prominent position among them. Her siblings include gods and goddesses such as Apollo, Artemis, and Hermes, each contributing to the rich tapestry of divine relations in Greek mythology. However, Athena's connection to her mother, Metis, is particularly significant as it underscores her association with wisdom and strategic counsel. Athena's character is defined by a diverse array of attributes, each symbolizing aspects of her multifaceted nature. Foremost among these is wisdom, which encompasses intellectual prowess, strategic insight, and practical knowledge. Athena's wisdom transcends mere intelligence. It is a blend of experience, intuition, and foresight that guides her actions and decisions. In addition to wisdom, Athena is associated with strategic warfare, a reflection of her martial prowess and tactical acumen. Unlike Ares, the god of brutal warfare, Athena embodies a more disciplined and strategic approach to conflict, favoring cunning over brute force. She is often depicted as a protector of heroes, offering them guidance and assistance in their quests for glory. Athena's symbols are as varied as her attributes, each carrying layers of meaning and significance. The owl, with its association with wisdom and foresight, is perhaps the most iconic symbol of Athena. It serves as her constant companion, symbolizing her vigilance and keen insight. The olive tree is another emblem closely linked to Athena, representing peace, prosperity, and civilization. According to myth, Athena gifted the olive tree to the city of Athens in a contest against Poseidon, thus securing her role as its patron deity. Throughout Greek mythology, Athena plays a pivotal role in numerous tales and legends, showcasing her diverse talents and virtues. One of the most famous myths involving Athena is her contest with Poseidon for patronage over Athens. In this myth, Poseidon and Athena compete to provide the city with the most valuable gift. Poseidon strikes the ground with his trident, creating a saltwater spring, while Athena plants the first olive tree. The citizens of Athens choose Athena's gift, establishing her as their patron goddess and cementing her association with the city. Another notable myth featuring Athena is her role in the Trojan War where she supports the Greeks in their conflict against the Trojans. Athena aids heroes such as Odysseus and Achilles, offering them strategic counsel and divine protection. In one instance, she disguises herself as Mentor, a trusted advisor, to guide Telemachus, the son of Odysseus, in his search for his father. Athena's interventions are instrumental in the eventual Greek victory, highlighting her role as a divine protector and strategist. Beyond her role in mythology, Athena holds significant cultural and historical importance in ancient Greece. As the patron goddess of Athens, she was venerated through lavish festivals, grand temples, and monumental statues. The Parthenon, a magnificent temple dedicated to Athena Parthenos, 
stands as a testament to her enduring influence in Athenian society. The city's cultural and intellectual achievements were often attributed to Athena's guidance and protection, fostering a sense of civic pride and identity among its citizens. Athena's influence extended beyond Athens, permeating various aspects of Greek life and culture. She was revered as a guardian of civilization, promoting the values of wisdom, justice, and courage. Her image adorned coins, pottery, and sculptures, serving as a symbol of Greek identity and ideals. Moreover, Athena's association with craftsmanship and the arts inspired artisans and craftsmen to excel in their respective fields, contributing to Greece's cultural and artistic legacy. Hera Hera stands as a prominent figure, embodying the complexities of power, marriage, and femininity. Revered as the queen of the gods, Hera's presence extends beyond her role as the wife of Zeus. She embodies the essence of womanhood, strength, and sovereignty. Throughout the ages, her character has been subject to both admiration and criticism, reflecting the multifaceted nature of her persona. Hera's origins are deeply rooted in the primordial chaos that preceded the universe's creation in Greek mythology. Born to Cronus and Rhea, titans who ruled before the reign of the Olympian gods, Hera emerged as one of their six siblings, including Hestia, Demeter, Poseidon, Hades, and Zeus. She was among the younger generation of deities who would eventually overthrow the titans, leading to the establishment of the Olympian order. Hera's birthplace is often attributed to the island of Samos or the mountainous region of Argos, both of which hold significance in her cult worship. Her association with these locales underscores her connection to nature and fertility, themes recurrent throughout her mythology. As the queen of the gods, Hera embodies numerous attributes and symbols emblematic of her authority and power. Foremost among these is her association with marriage and family. Hera is revered as the goddess of marriage, presiding over unions and safeguarding the sanctity of the marital bond. In her role as a divine matron, she oversees fertility, childbirth, and the nurturing of offspring. Iconographically, Hera is often depicted adorned in regal attire, wearing a diadem or crown befitting her royal status. Her scepter symbolizes her sovereignty and authority over the heavens and earth. Peacocks, cow-eyed oxen, and pomegranates are among the sacred animals and fruits associated with Hera, each holding symbolic significance within her mythology. Hera's mythology is replete with tales that showcase her character's complexity, resilience, and occasional vindictiveness. Among the most renowned narratives involving Hera is her marriage to Zeus, the king of the gods. Their union, though revered as divine, is fraught with strife and infidelity, as Zeus's amorous escapades with mortal and immortal beings provoke Hera's wrath. One of the most enduring myths associated with Hera is her relentless persecution of Zeus's mortal consorts and illegitimate offspring. Her jealousy and vengefulness manifest in the form of elaborate schemes and punishments aimed at thwarting Zeus's extramarital affairs. The stories of Io, Leto, and Hercules bear testament to Hera's vindictive nature and the trials endured by those entangled in her wrath. Despite her penchant for jealousy and retribution, Hera's mythology also highlights her benevolent aspects. As a goddess of marriage and childbirth, she is revered as a protector of women and children, offering solace and aid to those in need. The myth of Alcmene, mother of Hercules, showcases Hera's capacity for compassion and empathy, as she assists the mortal woman during her time of travail. Hera's cult worship was widespread throughout ancient Greece, with numerous temples and sanctuaries dedicated to her veneration. Among the most renowned of these was the Heraean at Olympia, a grandiose complex erected in her honor during the 8th century BCE. The Olympic Games, held every four years in Olympia, included rituals and festivities dedicated to Hera, underscoring her importance in the pantheon of Olympian deities. Throughout the Greek world, Hera's festivals and rites celebrated her various aspects, 
from her role as a divine matron to her association with fertility and motherhood. The Haraya, an annual festival held in her honor, featured athletic competitions and processions honoring the goddess and her divine attributes. Hera's legacy extends far beyond the realm of Greek mythology, permeating art, literature, and culture throughout the ages. In ancient Greece, her image adorned coins, pottery, and sculpture, serving as a symbol of feminine power and sovereignty. Poets and playwrights, including Homer, Hesiod, and Euripides, immortalized her in their works, depicting her as both a formidable deity and a complex character grappling with the vicissitudes of divine life. In the modern era, Hera's influence endures in various forms, from the portrayal of powerful female protagonists in literature and media to the enduring symbolism of marriage and family in contemporary society. Her archetype continues to inspire interpretations and reimaginings, reflecting the timeless allure of her character and mythology. Poseidon Poseidon stands out as one of the most compelling and enigmatic figures. As the god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses, Poseidon wields immense power and influence over both the natural and human realms. Poseidon is the son of Cronus and Rhea, making him one of the Olympian gods. He belongs to the second generation of divine beings, born after Cronus overthrew his father, Uranus, and became ruler of the universe. Poseidon's siblings include Zeus, the king of the gods, and Hades, the ruler of the underworld. Together, these three brothers divided the cosmos among themselves, with Zeus ruling the sky, Hades the underworld, and Poseidon the sea. Poseidon's dominion over the sea is central to many myths and legends. His most iconic symbol is the trident, a three-pronged spear that represents his authority over the waters. Poseidon is often depicted riding a chariot pulled by magnificent sea creatures, such as dolphins or hippocamps, mythical creatures with the upper body of a horse and the lower body of a fish point. One of Poseidon's most famous exploits is his role in the founding of Athens. According to legend, Poseidon and Athena, the goddess of wisdom and warfare, competed to become the city's patron deity. Poseidon struck the ground with his trident, causing a spring of salt water to gush forth. However, Athena, with her gift of an olive tree, ultimately won the favor of the Athenian people, and the city was named in her honor. Poseidon's temperament is often portrayed as volatile and unpredictable, reflecting the capricious nature of the sea itself. In many myths, he is depicted as both a benefactor and a punisher of mortals, alternately granting safe passage to sailors and wreaking havoc with storms and tidal waves. In addition to his trident and chariot, Poseidon is associated with various symbols and attributes that highlight his connection to the sea and its creatures. The dolphin, in particular, holds special significance as a sacred animal of Poseidon. Dolphins are often depicted accompanying him in art and mythology, serving as messengers and companions of the sea god. Other symbols associated with Poseidon include the sea serpent, a mythical creature often depicted as a fearsome serpent with the tail of a fish. The sea serpent symbolizes the untamed power of the ocean and the dangers that lurk beneath its surface. In some myths, Poseidon is also linked to horses, either as their creator or as their master. Horses were highly prized in ancient Greece for their speed and agility, and Poseidon's association with these noble creatures further unlose his status as a powerful and revered deity. In ancient Greek culture, Poseidon held a central place in religious worship and civic life. As the god of the sea, he was invoked by sailors and fishermen seeking safe passage and bountiful catches. Coastal cities and ports often erected temples and shrines in his honor, where offerings and sacrifices were made to appease his wrath and gain his favor. Poseidon's role as the Earth Shaker, responsible for earthquakes and other seismic disturbances, also inspired awe and fear among the ancient Greeks. Earthquakes were seen as manifestations of Poseidon's power, 
and rituals were performed to appease him and prevent further destruction. Beyond his role as a patron deity of the sea and earthquakes, Poseidon was also associated with fertility and abundance. As the bringer of rain and storms, he was believed to ensure the fertility of the land and the success of crops. In this way, Poseidon was seen as a beneficent force of nature, providing for the needs of both gods and mortals alike. The influence of Poseidon extends far beyond the realm of ancient Greek mythology. His imagery and symbolism have permeated art, literature, and popular culture throughout the ages. In art, Poseidon is often depicted as a powerful and imposing figure, wielding his trident amidst crashing waves and swirling sea creatures. His likeness can be found on ancient pottery, sculptures, and coins, serving as a testament to his enduring legacy. In literature, Poseidon's exploits and adventures continue to captivate audiences around the world. From ancient epics like Homer's The Odyssey to modern retellings and adaptations, Poseidon remains a compelling and complex character, embodying the forces of nature and the depths of the human psyche. In popular culture, Poseidon has been reimagined in various forms, from blockbuster films to video games and comic books. His role as the god of the sea lends itself to epic storytelling and adventure, captivating audiences of all ages with tales of heroism, romance, and divine conflict. Artemis Artemis the goddess of the hunt, wilderness, childbirth, and virginity, is one of the most intriguing figures in Greek mythology. Daughter of Zeus and Leto, and twin sister of Apollo, Artemis is celebrated for her independence, strength, and fierce devotion to her ideals. Throughout history, she has captured the imagination of countless individuals, serving as a symbol of empowerment, nature, and the untamed spirit. Artemis's origins are deeply rooted in Greek mythology, where she is revered as one of the twelve Olympian gods. According to legend, she was born on the island of Delos, the daughter of Zeus, the king of the gods, and Leto, a Tetanus. Her birth was fraught with adversity, as her jealous stepmother, Hera, pursued Leto relentlessly, forbidding her to give birth on any land touched by the sun. Leto finally found refuge on the island of Delos, which was a floating landmass not considered a proper land. Here, she gave birth to Artemis and her twin brother, Apollo, with the assistance of the goddesses of childbirth, Ilithia and Alithia. This challenging birth, along with her subsequent upbringing, played a significant role in shaping Artemis's character and defining her as a symbol of resilience and independence. Artemis's family ties extend beyond her immediate kin. She is often depicted as part of a larger divine family, which includes her siblings, parents, and fellow Olympian gods. Her relationships with her family members, particularly her twin brother Apollo and her father Zeus, are complex and multifaceted, contributing to her rich narrative and mythology. Artemis's mythology is vast and varied, encompassing a wide range of stories, adventures, and exploits. Central to her mythology is her role as the goddess of the hunt, a fierce and skilled huntress who roams the wilderness with her band of nymphs and hunting companions. In many myths, she is portrayed as a protector of wildlife and a guardian of the natural world, fiercely defending it against any who would threaten its sanctity. One of Artemis's most famous myths is the tale of Actaeon, a mortal hunter who stumbled upon her bathing in a sacred spring. Enraged by his intrusion, Artemis transformed him into a stag, and he was subsequently torn apart by his own hounds. This story serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of defying the boundaries set by the gods and disrespecting their sacred spaces. Artemis is also closely associated with childbirth and fertility, serving as a guardian of women and children. In this aspect, she is often invoked by expectant mothers seeking protection and assistance during labor. One of her most well-known epithets is Artemis Ilithia, which refers to her role as a midwife and protector of childbirth. Additionally, 
Artemis is celebrated for her fierce independence and refusal to conform to traditional gender roles. As a virgin goddess, she rejected the advances of gods and mortals alike, choosing instead to devote herself entirely to her pursuits as a huntress and protector of the natural world. This aspect of her character has made her a symbol of female empowerment and autonomy throughout history. Artemis held a prominent place in ancient Greek society, where she was worshipped as a powerful and benevolent deity. Temples and sanctuaries dedicated to her dotted the Greek landscape, and her festivals and rituals were celebrated with great fervor. One of the most famous of these festivals was the Broronia, held in honor of Artemis Broronia, a variant of the goddess associated with the transition from girlhood to womanhood. Artemis's cult was particularly popular among women, who revered her as a protector and patroness. Priestesses known as Arctoi served in her temples, participating in sacred rites and ceremonies dedicated to the goddess. These priestesses played a crucial role in maintaining Artemis's cult and ensuring her continued worship throughout the ancient world. Artemis's significance extended beyond religious worship to encompass various aspects of daily life in ancient Greece. As the goddess of the hunt, she was invoked by hunters seeking success in their pursuits and by farmers seeking protection for their crops and livestock. Her association with childbirth made her a vital figure in women's lives, with expectant mothers often offering prayers and sacrifices to ensure a safe delivery. Furthermore, Artemis's mythology and symbolism permeated Greek art, literature, and philosophy, influencing some of the greatest minds of the ancient world. Philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle invoked her as a symbol of purity and virtue, while poets such as Homer and Euripides immortalized her in their epic works. Artemis's legacy endures to this day, continuing to captivate and inspire people around the world. Her image and symbolism can be found in art, literature, and popular culture, where she is often depicted as a symbol of strength, independence, and natural beauty. In art, Artemis is frequently portrayed as a youthful and athletic figure, clad in a short tunic and armed with a bow and arrows. These representations emphasize her role as a huntress and protector of wildlife, capturing her wild and untamed spirit. In literature, Artemis appears in countless works of fiction, poetry, and drama, where she is often depicted as a powerful and enigmatic figure. Writers such as Rick Reardon, Madeline Miller, and Suzanne Collins have drawn upon her mythology and symbolism to create compelling stories that resonate with readers of all ages. In popular culture, Artemis's influence can be seen in films, television shows, and video games where she is often portrayed as a fierce and independent heroine. From the iconic portrayal of Artemis in Disney's animated film, Hercules, to her appearances in popular video game franchises like Assassin's Creed and Smite, she continues to captivate audiences with her strength and beauty. Zeus. Zeus, the paramount deity of Greek mythology, reigns supreme atop Mount Olympus, wielding thunderbolts and dispensing justice to gods and mortals alike. His image adorns countless works of art, his myths inspire awe and wonder, and his name continues to reverberate through the annals of human culture. From his majestic throne in the heavens, Zeus presides over a pantheon of gods and goddesses, shaping the destiny of the cosmos with his divine authority and boundless power. The story of Zeus begins with the primordial chaos of the universe, where Gaia, Earth, and Uranus, Sky, give birth to the Titans, powerful beings who ruled the cosmos in a bygone era. Among the Titans emerged Cronus, who, prompted by a prophecy foretelling his downfall at the hands of his offspring, usurped the throne of his father Uranus. Yet, fearing a similar fate, Cronus devoured each of his children upon their birth, until his wife Rhea, goddess of fertility, devised a plan to save their youngest son, Zeus. Rhea, grieving the loss of her children, sought refuge in the depths of Crete, where she gave birth to Zeus in secret. In place of the infant Zeus, 
She presented Cronus with a stone wrapped in swaddling clothes, which he promptly swallowed, believing it to be his son. Raised in secrecy by the nymphs of Crete, Zeus grew in strength and cunning, biding his time until the day of reckoning arrived. With the aid of his mother and the Tetanus Metis, Zeus orchestrated a scheme to force Cronus to regurgitate his siblings, who emerged and scathed from their father's belly. Thus liberated, Zeus and his siblings, Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Poseidon, and Hades, waged a fierce war against the Titans, known as the Titanomachy, which culminated in their victory and the establishment of Zeus as the supreme ruler of the cosmos. Zeus, the mighty thunderer, is often depicted as a regal figure with a flowing beard, clad in robes befitting his divine station. His countenance radiates authority and power, his piercing eyes surveying the heavens and the earth with unerring vigilance. In his hand, he brandishes the thunderbolt, a fearsome weapon forged by the Cyclopes, which he hurls with devastating force against his enemies. Among the symbols associated with Zeus are the eagle, which serves as his sacred messenger and companion, and the oak tree, which represents strength, endurance, and wisdom. Epithets such as Zeus Olympios, Zeus Xenios, and Zeus Agoreos reflect his various roles as the patron of Olympus, the protector of guests and travelers, and the guardian of public spaces, respectively. As the sovereign ruler of the gods, Zeus presides over the Olympian Council, a gathering of twelve deities who deliberate on matters of cosmic importance. From his throne atop Mount Olympus, Zeus dispenses justice with impartiality and wisdom, meeting out rewards and punishments according to the dictates of fate and divine law. Yet, Zeus's authority is not absolute, for he is bound by the cosmic order known as Moira, which governs the destinies of gods and mortals alike. Despite his power, Zeus is subject to the whims of fate and the dictates of the fates, who weave the threads of destiny with inexorable precision. The myths surrounding Zeus are as numerous as the stars in the night sky, spanning the breadth of human experience from the creation of the world to the exploits of heroes and demigods. Foremost among these myths is the Titanomachy, the epic struggle between the Olympian gods and the Titans, which culminated in Zeus's triumph and the establishment of his reign. Yet, Zeus's adventures extend far beyond the confines of Olympus, encompassing a multitude of romantic escapades, divine conflicts, and acts of heroism. From his amorous dalliances with mortal women to his battles against monstrous adversaries such as the Giants and the Typhon, Zeus's exploits are the stuff of legend, inspiring awe and reverence in equal measure. Throughout the ancient world, Zeus was venerated as the supreme deity, honored with temples, sacrifices, and festivals in his honor. The most famous of these temples was the Temple of Zeus at Olympia, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, which housed a colossal statue of the god crafted by the renowned sculptor Phidias. Festivals such as the Olympic Games, held every four years in honor of Zeus, served as a testament to his enduring popularity and influence. Moreover, oracles such as the Oracle of Dodona and the Oracle of Zeus at Olympia provided guidance and divination to pilgrims seeking the counsel of the gods. The legacy of Zeus extends far beyond the boundaries of ancient Greece, permeating the cultural landscape of the Western world and beyond. From the epics of Homer and Hesiod to the tragedies of Aeschylus and Euripides, Zeus's presence looms large in the literature and art of antiquity, shaping the imagination of generations to come. Moreover, Zeus's character has been the subject of philosophical inquiry and interpretation, with scholars such as Plato and Aristotle grappling with the ethical and metaphysical implications of his actions. In the realm of comparative mythology, Zeus has been likened to other sky gods such as Jupiter in Roman mythology and Indra in Hindu mythology, revealing the universal appeal of his archetype. In the modern era, Zeus continues to exert a powerful influence on popular culture, 
appearing in a myriad of forms ranging from literature and film to television and video games. Whether portrayed as a benevolent father figure or a wrathful deity, Zeus's image continues to captivate the human imagination, resonating with timeless themes of power, authority, and destiny. Furthermore, psychologists and sociologists have sought to uncover the psychological and sociological underpinnings of Zeus's archetype, exploring its relevance to contemporary issues such as leadership, governance, and morality. By examining Zeus's flaws and virtues through a modern lens, we gain insight into the complexities of human nature and the enduring appeal of mythic archetypes. Now let's visit the Egyptian gods and goddesses. Ra, the sun god, occupies a central position in the pantheon of ancient Egyptian deities. Known as the Great Ennead, or the One Who Illuminates, Ra represented the sun's life-giving force and the ultimate source of light and energy. Depicted as a falcon-headed man or as a solar disk with wings, Ra embodied the majesty and power of the sun. The origins of Ra trace back to the earliest periods of Egyptian civilization, with evidence suggesting his worship dates to the pre-dynastic era. Initially associated with the midday sun, Ra gradually assimilated attributes of other solar deities, such as Atum and Horus, as Egyptian mythology evolved over millennia. This syncretism contributed to Ra's multifaceted nature and enduring popularity. In Egyptian cosmology, Ra played a pivotal role as the sun god who traversed the sky each day in his solar bark. According to myth, Ra emerged from the primordial waters of Nun at dawn, traveled across the sky during the day, and entered the underworld at night to combat the forces of chaos. This cyclical journey symbolized the eternal cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Beyond his solar aspect, Ra was also revered as the creator of the universe and the ruler of both gods and mortals. In the myth of the first time, Ra fashioned the world and all its inhabitants, establishing order, Mahat, from chaos, Isfet. As the supreme deity, Ra wielded unparalleled authority, shaping the destinies of gods and humans alike. The daily journey of Ra across the sky held profound symbolic significance for the ancient Egyptians. Each morning, Ra was reborn with the rising sun, symbolizing renewal and regeneration. As he ascended to the zenith, Ra's radiant light illuminated the world, nourishing crops and sustaining life. At dusk, Ra embarked on his perilous voyage through the underworld, facing trials and adversaries before emerging triumphant at dawn. Within the Egyptian pantheon, Ra maintained complex familial relationships with other gods and goddesses. As the father of gods, Ra sired numerous divine offspring, including Shu, Tefnut, Nut, and Geb, who represented the elements of air, moisture, sky, and earth, respectively. Additionally, Ra's union with the sky goddess Hathor produced the lion-headed goddess Sekhmet, embodying both healing and destruction. The cult of Ra thrived throughout ancient Egypt, with temples dedicated to the sun god erected in major cities such as Heliopolis and Karnak. Priests and priestesses conducted elaborate rituals to honor Ra, offering prayers, hymns, and sacrifices to ensure his favor and benevolence. Festivals celebrating Ra's divine attributes and mythic exploits attracted throngs of devotees, reinforcing his status as a beloved and omnipotent deity. Ra's symbolism and iconography. In Egyptian art and iconography, Ra was depicted in various forms and manifestations, each conveying different aspects of his divine nature. As the sun disk, Ra symbolized enlightenment, truth, and divine sovereignty. In human form, Ra embodied the regal authority and wisdom of a divine ruler. Additionally, Ra's association with the falcon underscored his role as a vigilant guardian and protector of the cosmos. The cult of Ra extended beyond the borders of Egypt, 
influencing neighboring cultures and civilizations throughout the ancient Near East. The concept of the Sun God as a benevolent creator and sustainer of life resonated with peoples across the region, leading to synthetic adaptations and assimilations of Ra into diverse religious traditions. Ra's enduring legacy persists in modern-day beliefs and practices, testament to the lasting impact of Egyptian mythology on world culture. In contemporary scholarship and popular culture, Ra continues to fascinate and inspire. Scholars explore the theological and symbolic dimensions of Ra's mythology, uncovering new insights into ancient Egyptian cosmology and religious beliefs. Meanwhile, artists, writers and filmmakers draw upon Ra's iconic imagery and narrative motifs, reimagining the sun, God's mythic adventures for new generations. Anubis Anubis, known as the Guardian of the Dead, occupies a significant place in the pantheon of ancient Egyptian gods. His distinctive appearance, often depicted with the head of a jackal and the body of a human, captivates the imagination and has sparked fascination for millennia. As a deity closely associated with death, mummification and the afterlife, Anubis played a pivotal role in Egyptian religious beliefs and funerary practices. The origins of Anubis are shrouded in the mists of ancient Egyptian mythology with various accounts and interpretations offered by scholars and historians. One prevailing theory suggests that Anubis emerged as a deity during the pre-dynastic period, possibly originating from the ancient cults of jackal gods worshipped in Lower Egypt. Over time, Anubis became increasingly integrated into Egyptian religious beliefs, evolving into the powerful and enigmatic figure revered by the ancient Egyptians. Anubis is typically depicted as a jackal-headed figure, representing his association with death, embalming, and the guardianship of the deceased. The jackal, known for scavenging corpses, symbolized the role of Anubis in protecting the deceased and guiding their souls to the afterlife. In addition to his animal head, Anubis is often portrayed with a human body, reflecting his divine status among the Egyptian gods. In Egyptian mythology, Anubis held a unique and indispensable role in the realm of the afterlife. As the son of Osiris and Nephthys, Anubis played a crucial part in the myth of Osiris' resurrection, overseeing the mummification process and assisting in the judgment of souls. According to ancient texts such as the Book of the Dead, Anubis weighed the hearts of the deceased against the feather of Ma'at, determining their worthiness to enter the afterlife. Anubis served as the guardian and guide for souls navigating the treacherous journey through the afterlife. His role involved ensuring that the deceased received proper burial rites and protection against malevolent forces. Through rituals such as mummification and funerary rites, Anubis facilitated the transition of the soul to the realm of the dead, where it would undergo judgment and embark on its eternal journey. Throughout ancient Egypt, Anubis was venerated through elaborate rituals and ceremonies dedicated to honoring the dead. Priests devoted to Anubis conducted mummification procedures with meticulous care, believing that proper preservation of the body was essential for the soul's passage to the afterlife. Temples and shrines dedicated to Anubis dotted the landscape of ancient Egypt, serving as focal points for religious devotion and commemoration of the deceased. The image of Anubis permeated all aspects of ancient Egyptian culture, leaving an indelible mark on art, literature and religious iconography. From intricately decorated sarcophagi to vibrant murals adorning temple walls, representations of Anubis abound in ancient Egyptian artifacts. Moreover, Anubis featured prominently in religious texts and mythological narratives, captivating the imagination of generations with tales of his divine exploits and benevolent guidance. Despite the passage of millennia, 
the legacy of Anubis endures as a symbol of death, rebirth, and the eternal cycle of life. In contemporary culture, Anubis continues to fascinate and inspire, appearing in literature, film, and popular media as a mysterious and enigmatic figure. His image serves as a potent reminder of humanity's enduring fascination with the mysteries of death and the afterlife, inviting contemplation and introspection. Isis Isis is a central figure in ancient Egyptian mythology, revered as one of the most important goddesses in the pantheon. Her significance transcends her role as a mere deity. She represents essential aspects of Egyptian culture, religion and society. The origins of Isis trace back to ancient Egypt's pre-dynastic period, with evidence of her worship dating back to the early dynastic period, c. 3100-2686 BCE. However, her prominence increased significantly during the Middle Kingdom, c. 2055-1650 BCE, and reached its zenith in the Greco-Roman period, c. 332 BCE-395 CE, when her cult spread throughout the Mediterranean world. Isis is the daughter of the sky god Geb and the earth goddess Nut. She is also the sister and wife of Osiris, the god of the afterlife and resurrection. Their union produced Horus, the falcon-headed god associated with kingship and the sky. Additionally, Isis is often depicted as the mother of other deities or as a protective figure in various mythological narratives. Isis is typically depicted as a woman wearing a throne shapid headdress, adorned with a sun disk and cow horns, a symbol of her connection to Hathor, the goddess of love, music and motherhood. Sometimes she is depicted with outspread wings, emphasizing her role as a protective and nurturing deity. Her association with magic and healing is symbolized by her holding a lotus scepter, while her role as a mother and wife is often represented through her holding her son, Horus. One of the most famous myths involving Isis is the tale of Osiris's murder and resurrection. According to legend, Osiris was killed by his brother Set, who coveted his throne. Set dismembered Osiris's body and scattered the pieces throughout Egypt. Devastated by her husband's death, Isis embarked on a quest to retrieve Osiris's body parts and restore him to life. Through her magical prowess and unwavering devotion, Isis successfully resurrected Osiris long enough for them to conceive Horus, the avenger of his father's murder. Isis's maternal role is central to many Egyptian myths, reflecting her nurturing and protective nature. She is often portrayed as a compassionate figure who cares for the sick and needy, demonstrating her role as a healer and provider. In some stories, Isis intervenes on behalf of mortals, offering guidance, protection, and assistance in times of trouble. Another significant myth involving Isis centers on her quest to obtain the secret name of the sun god Ra, believed to hold immense power. In this tale, Isis disguises herself as an old woman and tricks Ra into revealing his secret name. Armed with this knowledge, Isis gains authority over Ra and uses it to protect her family and followers. Isis was worshipped throughout Egypt and beyond, with numerous temples, shrines and sanctuaries dedicated to her veneration. The most renowned of these was the Temple of Isis at Philae, located on an island in the Nile River. Pilgrims from across the ancient world flocked to this sacred site to pay homage to the goddess and seek her blessings. Devotees of Isis participated in various rituals and festivals to honor their goddess and seek her favor. These included processions, offerings, prayers and sacred dramas depicting Isis's mythological exploits. The annual festival of Koyak, celebrating Osiris's resurrection, was particularly significant as it symbolized the triumph of life over death and the renewal of fertility. Isis's influence extended far beyond ancient Egypt, shaping the religious beliefs, artistic expressions 
and cultural practices of subsequent civilizations. Her cult spread throughout the Mediterranean world, particularly during the Hellenistic and Roman periods, where she was syncretized with various other goddesses, such as Demeter, Aphrodite, and Venus. The veneration of Isis persisted into the early Christian era, with some elements of her cult assimilated into Christian iconography and worship. Similarly, in Islamic tradition, Isis is sometimes equated with the figure of Mary, the mother of Jesus, due to their shared attributes of compassion, mercy, and maternal love. Despite the decline of ancient Egyptian religion, interest in Isis and her mythology persists to this day, inspiring artists, writers, and spiritual seekers around the world. Her enduring appeal lies in her multifaceted nature as a goddess of magic, motherhood, healing, and divine wisdom, making her a timeless symbol of feminine power and resilience. Bastet. Bastet, often depicted as a lioness or a domestic cat, is one of the most prominent and beloved goddesses in ancient Egyptian mythology. Revered as the protector of home, fertility, women and children, Bastet's significance transcends mere religious worship. She embodies the essence of domesticity, grace and ferocity intertwined. The origins of Bastet can be traced back to ancient Egypt's earliest periods, where she emerged as a lioness goddess associated with war and protection. In these early depictions, she was known as the fierce lioness warrior, often depicted with the sun god Ra, acting as his defender and destroyer of his enemies. However, Bastet's character gradually underwent transformation over millennia, evolving into a goddess with more benevolent and nurturing attributes. By the New Kingdom period, circa 1550-1070 BCE, she became associated with domesticity, fertility, and maternity. This transformation coincided with the increasing importance of domestic life and the rising status of women within Egyptian society. The city of Bubastis, modern-day Telbasta, in the Nile Delta region, served as the principal center of Bastet's worship. Bubastis was renowned for its grand temple dedicated to the goddess, attracting pilgrims from all over Egypt. Bastet's cult reached its zenith during the late period, circa 664-332 BCE, when she enjoyed widespread popularity and reverence across the land. Bastet's symbolism is rich and varied, reflecting her diverse roles and attributes. She is commonly depicted in two main forms, as a lioness and as a domestic cat. As a lioness, she embodies power, protection and ferocity, often depicted wielding weapons or as a lion-headed goddess with a sun disk atop her head, symbolizing her connection with the solar deity Ra. In her domestic cat form, Bastet represents fertility, femininity and grace. She is depicted as a slender, elegant cat often adorned with jewelry, emphasizing her association with luxury and prosperity. Cats were highly revered in ancient Egypt for their ability to control vermin, and Bastet's affinity with them elevated their status to that of sacred animals. Numerous myths and legends surround Bastet, highlighting her diverse roles and attributes. One of the most famous myths depicts Bastet, as the daughter of Ra, born from his eye during his nightly journey through the underworld. In this myth, she assumes the role of a fierce lioness, defending Ra from his enemies and ensuring his safe passage. Another popular myth portrays Bastet as the protector of the home and family. According to this myth, she wards off evil spirits and malevolent forces, ensuring the safety and well-being of households. Bastet is also closely associated with childbirth and fertility, with women often invoking her aid during pregnancy and childbirth. The worship of Bastet was an integral part of ancient Egyptian religious life, with temples dedicated to her found throughout the land. The temple of Bastet at Bubastis was the most prominent among these, serving as the focal point of her cultic worship. 
pilgrims from all walks of life journeyed to Bubastis to pay homage to the goddess, offering prayers, sacrifices, and votive offerings in exchange for her blessings. Rituals honoring Bastet varied in nature and scope, ranging from solemn processions to lively festivals. The festival of Bastet, held annually at Bubastis, was a grand affair characterized by music, dancing, feasting, and revelry. Pilgrims from far and wide participated in the festivities, seeking Bastet's favor and celebrating her benevolence. Bastet's influence extended far beyond the boundaries of ancient Egypt, leaving an indelible mark on art, culture, and religion. Her iconic image as a cat goddess captivated the imagination of artists and craftsmen throughout the ages, inspiring countless works of art, from statues and amulets to paintings and jewelry. Moreover, Bastet's association with cats endured long after the decline of ancient Egyptian civilization, with cats continuing to be revered as sacred animals in various cultures around the world. The image of the graceful and enigmatic feline, embodying qualities of independence, elegance and mystery, owes much to the enduring legacy of Bastet. Known as the god of wisdom, writing and magic, Thoth held a prominent place in the religious and cultural landscape of ancient Egypt. Through his association with knowledge, language and the written word, Thoth became a symbol of intellect and learning. Thoth, also known as Jehuti in ancient Egyptian texts, emerged as a prominent deity during the early periods of Egyptian civilization, with his origins traced back to the pre-dynastic era, c. 6000 315 BCE. In the cosmogony of ancient Egypt, Thoth played a pivotal role in the creation myth. He was believed to have been self-created or born from the lips of the creator god Atum during the process of creation. As the divine scribe and mediator between gods and humans, Thoth was responsible for maintaining cosmic order, Mahat, and preserving the balance between the forces of chaos, Isfet, and harmony. According to mythological texts, Thoth played a crucial role in the weighing of the heart ceremony during the judgment of the dead, where he recorded the deeds of individuals on the scales of justice. Thoth was depicted in various forms and guises, each representing different aspects of his multifaceted nature. One of his most common forms was that of an ibis-headed man, symbolizing his association with wisdom and learning. The ibis, a bird revered for its intelligence and keen observation in ancient Egypt, became closely linked with Thoth. Additionally, Thoth was often depicted as a baboon, particularly in his role as a lunar deity. The baboon was associated with the moon due to its nocturnal habits and vocalizations at night. Thoth's connection to the moon further emphasized his role as a guide through the darkness of ignorance and the mysteries of the cosmos. Among his attributes, Thoth was renowned for his mastery of language and writing. He was credited with inventing hieroglyphs, the ancient Egyptian writing system composed of pictorial symbols. This invention elevated Thoth to the status of a divine patron of scribes, scholars, and intellectuals. Throughout the millennia of ancient Egyptian history, Thoth's influence permeated all aspects of society. His temples were erected in major cities across Egypt, with the most famous being the Temple of Thoth in Hermopolis Magna, Khmun, the cult center dedicated to him. Devotees sought his favor through prayers, offerings, and rituals, believing that Thoth's wisdom could aid them in matters of governance, law, medicine, and magic. Thoth's association with magic and occult knowledge was particularly significant. He was revered as the master of all magical arts and was invoked in spells and incantations for protection, healing, and divination. As the patron deity of scribes, Thoth was also invoked by those seeking inspiration and guidance in their literary endeavors. The figure of Thoth looms large in ancient Egyptian literature and art, appearing in a multitude of religious texts, hymns, and funerary inscriptions. 
One of the most enduring myths involving Thoth is the story of the contendings of Horus and Seth, where he acts as a mediator in the struggle between the two rival deities for the throne of Egypt. In art, Thoth was often depicted in temple reliefs, sarcophagi, and papyri, portraying him in his various forms and roles. These artistic representations served not only as religious iconography, but also as educational tools, conveying the importance of wisdom, knowledge, and divine justice to the Egyptian populace. Despite the decline of ancient Egyptian civilization, the legacy of Thoth endured through the ages, influencing subsequent cultures and belief systems. In Greco-Roman times, Thoth was syncretized with the Greek god Hermes, giving rise to the composite deity Hermes Trismegistus, the legendary author of the Hermetic Corpus, a collection of esoteric writings on alchemy, astrology, and magic. In modern times, Thoth continues to captivate the imagination of scholars, artists, and occultists around the world. His image and symbolism have been appropriated in various cultural contexts, serving as inspiration for literature, art, and popular culture. Moreover, the concept of Thoth as the divine communicator and revealer of hidden knowledge resonates with contemporary seekers of wisdom and enlightenment. Gods and Goddesses from Elamite Mythology, Ninazu. Ninazu, also known as Ningish Zida in Sumerian mythology, holds a prominent place within the divine hierarchy of Elamite belief systems. He is often depicted as a serpent dragon or dragon-headed god, embodying both chthonic and celestial elements. Like many deities in ancient pantheons, Ninazu's genealogy is intertwined with the complex familial relationships among the gods. According to Elamite mythological texts, Ninazu is the son of the moon god Nana, also known as Sin, and his consort Ningal. This divine parentage aligns him with lunar symbolism, suggesting connections to cycles of renewal, fertility, and the underworld. Additionally, Ninazu is frequently associated with the goddess of love and war, Inanna, Ishtar in Akkadian, further expanding his role within the pantheon. As a deity with dualistic attributes, Ninazu embodies various aspects of life and death, fertility and decay. His association with serpents and dragons underscores his role as a guardian of thresholds, both literal and metaphorical. In Elamite iconography, Ninazu is often depicted with a serpent coiled around his body, symbolizing his dominion over the primordial forces of chaos and transformation. One of Ninazu's primary roles within Elamite mythology is that of the ruler of the underworld. In this capacity, he governs the realm of the dead, guiding souls through the afterlife and ensuring their passage to the realm of the ancestors. As such, Ninazu is revered as a judge and arbiter of destiny, presiding over the fates of mortals with impartiality and wisdom. In addition to his chthonic associations, Ninazu is also revered as a healer and patron of medicine. His serpent form is often invoked in healing rituals, where his divine presence is believed to bring comfort and restoration to the afflicted. As the embodiment of life force and vitality, Ninazu is invoked by healers and practitioners seeking to harness the regenerative powers of the natural world. The worship of Ninazu was integral to Elamite religious practices, with temples and shrines dedicated to his veneration found throughout the ancient Near East. Rituals honoring Ninazu typically involved offerings of food, drink, and incense, symbolizing the sustenance and nourishment he provides to both the living and the dead. One of the most significant festivals dedicated to Ninazu was the New Year celebration known as Akitu. This annual event marked the beginning of the agricultural cycle and was characterized by feasting, music, and ritualistic performances. During Akitu, 
devotees would gather at temples dedicated to Ninazu, seeking his blessings for a bountiful harvest and protection from malevolent spirits. In addition to public ceremonies, private devotional practices were also common among worshippers of Ninazu. Individuals would offer prayers and sacrifices to the deity in times of need, seeking his guidance and protection during times of illness, hardship or transition. Amulets and talismans depicting Ninasu were worn as protective charms, believed to ward off evil and ensure a prosperity. Despite the decline of Elamite civilization and the eventual assimilation of its religious traditions into broader Mesopotamian and Persian cultures, the legacy of Ninazu endured throughout the ancient Near East. His association with healing, fertility, and the afterlife resonated with subsequent generations of worshippers, leading to his assimilation into other religious pantheons. In Mesopotamian mythology, Ninazu became conflated with Ningish Zida, the Sumerian serpent dragon deity associated with fertility and agriculture. As such, his influence extended beyond the borders of Elam, permeating the religious landscape of ancient Mesopotamia and influencing the development of Babylonian and Assyrian mythologies. Similarly, Ninazu's serpent form and association with the underworld found parallels in the mythologies of neighboring cultures, such as the Greek myth of the serpent dragon, Ladon, guarding the golden apples of the Hesperides. This cross-cultural resonance underscores the enduring significance of Ninazu as a symbol of primordial wisdom and cosmic order. Humban. Humban, often depicted as a guardian deity, holds a significant place in Elamite cosmology and cultural narratives. To understand Humban's significance, one must delve into the origins and evolution of Elamite mythology. The ancient Elamites inhabited the region of modern-day Iran, flourishing from the 4th to the 1st millennium BCE. Their mythology, influenced by neighboring Mesopotamian, Sumerian and Persian cultures, bore unique characteristics reflective of Elamite society's values, fears, and aspirations. Elamite mythology centered around a pantheon of gods governing various aspects of nature, fertility, warfare, and the afterlife. Humban emerges as a prominent figure within this pantheon, revered as a guardian and protector. Humban embodies the archetype of the guardian deity, a figure tasked with safeguarding the boundaries between the mortal realm and the divine, as well as protecting the interests of humanity. Depictions of Humban often portray a powerful, imposing figure adorned with symbols of authority and protection. In Elamite society, where threats from neighboring civilizations and natural disasters loomed large, Humban symbolized resilience, strength and vigilance. Temples dedicated to Humban served as bastions of protection, where prayers and rituals were performed to invoke his favor and ward off malevolent forces. Mythological tales featuring Humban abound in Elamite lore, illustrating his role as a divine guardian and protector. One such legend recounts Humban's intervention during a great flood, where he guided survivors to safety and restored order to the devastated land. Another myth portrays Humban as a warrior god, leading celestial armies against chaos and darkness. His battles against monstrous adversaries symbolize humanity's struggle against adversity and the triumph of order over chaos. Cultic practices dedicated to Humban played a central role in Elamite religious life. Priests and priestesses conducted elaborate rituals to honor Humban, seeking his blessings for bountiful harvests, victory in war, and protection from calamity. Sacred texts and incantations invoked Humban's name, emphasizing his role as a benevolent guardian and patron deity. Offerings of food, wine, and precious artifacts were presented at his temples as tokens of reverence and gratitude. The iconography surrounding Humban offers insights into his symbolism and attributes. 
Depicted with a horned headdress, a symbol of divinity and power, Humban embodies the fusion of human and divine qualities. His association with lions, a common motif in Elamite art, underscores his symbols, such as the sun, the crescent moon, and the celestial sphere, frequently accompany representations of Humban, highlighting his celestial aspect and cosmic significance. Comparative analysis reveals parallels between Humban and deities from other mythological traditions. Similarities with Mesopotamian guardian deities such as Nergal and Ninurta suggest cross-cultural influences and shared religious motifs. Moreover, Humban's association with celestial bodies and cosmic forces resonates with archetypal figures found in Indo-European and Near Eastern mythologies, underscoring universal themes of divine protection and cosmic order. Despite the decline of Elamite civilization, Humban's legacy endured through subsequent periods of Iranian history. Elements of Elamite mythology including Humban's cultic practices and symbols, persisted in Zoroastrianism, the dominant religion of ancient Persia. Furthermore, Humban's mythological significance transcended geographical boundaries, influencing neighboring cultures and belief systems. His enduring legacy serves as a testament to the enduring power of myth and the human quest for meaning and transcendence. In Shushinak, in Shushinak, stands as a prominent figure, revered as the supreme god of the Elamite pantheon. This deity's significance extended beyond mere mythological narratives, permeating into various aspects of Elamite society, culture, and religious practices. Before delving into the intricacies of Elamite mythology, it is imperative to grasp the historical backdrop against which these narratives unfolded. The Elamites occupied the southwestern region of modern-day Iran, with their civilization flourishing from around 2700 BCE to 539 BCE. Situated in a geographically strategic location, the Elamites interacted with various neighboring civilizations, including the Mesopotamians, Babylonians, and Persians. Elamite society was marked by its cultural diversity, evident in its language, art and religious practices. This civilization boasted significant urban centers such as Susa, Shush, which served as its capital and a hub of political and religious activities. The Elamites engaged in trade, agriculture and craftsmanship, fostering a complex societal structure governed by distinct religious beliefs and rituals. The Elamite pantheon comprised a diverse array of deities each possessing unique attributes and roles within the cosmic order. These gods and goddesses were associated with various aspects of nature, fertility, warfare and governance. Among the pantheon, Inshushinak emerged as a central figure, revered as the supreme deity exerting authority over the divine realm and human affairs. Other notable deities in the Elamite pantheon included Humban, the god of war and justice, Napirisha, the goddess of fertility and agriculture, and Kiririsha, the goddess of healing and protection. These divine entities formed an intricate network of relationships, influencing both celestial phenomena and earthly events. Inshushinak, also known as Inshushinak Shukesh, lord of Susa, occupied a preeminent position within the Elamite pantheon. The etymology of the name Inshushinak remains a subject of scholarly debate, with interpretations suggesting connections to concepts such as sovereignty, power, and divine authority. As the principal deity of Susa, Inshushinak embodied the cosmic order and served as the guardian of kingship and civilization. Depictions of Inshushinak often portrayed him as a regal figure adorned with divine regalia, symbolizing his authority over the divine and mortal realms. Inshushinak was commonly associated with celestial bodies, particularly the sun and the stars, signifying his role in maintaining cosmic harmony and order. 
mythological narratives involving in Shushinak provided insights into the origins of the universe, the nature of divine beings, and the dynamics of the celestial hierarchy. Among the most prominent myths featuring in Shushinak was the creation epic, which recounted the deity's role in shaping the world and establishing the fundamental principles of existence. According to mythological accounts, in Shushinak emerged from the primordial chaos, wielding his divine authority to bring order to the cosmos. Through his actions, he separated the heavens from the earth, established the cycles of day and night, and bestowed upon humanity the gifts of knowledge and civilization. In Shushinak's divine consort, often identified as Naparisha or Kiririsha, played a crucial role in these mythological narratives, symbolizing the union of masculine and feminine energies within the cosmic order. The worship of Inshushinak was central to Elamite religious practices, permeating every aspect of daily life and communal gatherings. Temples dedicated to the deity served as focal points for religious ceremonies, where priests and priestesses conducted rituals to honor and appease the divine. One of the most significant religious festivals dedicated to Inshushinak was the New Year celebration known as Akitu, during which elaborate rituals and processions were held to ensure the renewal of cosmic order and the prosperity of the land. Offerings of food, incense, and precious artifacts were presented to the deity, accompanied by prayers and hymns invoking Inshushinak's blessings upon the kingdom and its inhabitants. The city of Susa, as the seat of Inshushinak's cult, boasted magnificent temples and sacred precincts dedicated to the deity. The most renowned among these was the Temple of Inshushinak, a grand edifice adorned with intricately carved reliefs, statues, and inscriptions glorifying the divine attributes of the god. Within the temple complex, priests and priestesses conducted daily rituals and ceremonies, maintaining the sacred fires and attending to the needs of the deity. The temple served as a center of spiritual pilgrimage, attracting devotees from across the Elamite realm who sought blessings, guidance, and divine favor from Inshushinak. The legacy of Inshushinak extended far beyond the confines of Elamite civilization, influencing neighboring cultures and civilizations through trade, diplomacy, and cultural exchange. In Shushinak's association with celestial phenomena, kingship, and divine sovereignty resonated with broader themes present in ancient Near Eastern mythologies, contributing to the syncretic nature of religious beliefs in the region. With the decline of Elamite power and the rise of subsequent empires, such as the Babylonians and Persians, the worship of Inshushinak gradually waned, relegated to the annals of history. However, echoes of his divine attributes and mythological narratives persisted, leaving an indelible mark on the religious consciousness of the region. Kiririsha. Kiririsha, sometimes spelled Kiririsa, is a deity whose presence is scattered throughout Elamite mythology, yet her nature and significance remain elusive to modern scholars. Through the examination of various texts, archaeological findings, and comparative analyses with neighboring cultures, we can attempt to unravel the mysteries surrounding this enigmatic figure. To understand Kiririsha, it is essential to grasp the historical and cultural backdrop of the Elamite civilization. Elam, situated in the southwestern region of modern-day Iran, was one of the oldest civilizations in the Near East, flourishing from around 2700 BCE until its eventual absorption by the Persian Empire in the 6th century BCE. Despite its proximity to Mesopotamia and its interactions with the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians and Assyrians, Elam maintained a distinct cultural identity, including its religious beliefs and practices. The Elamites left behind a corpus of inscriptions written in the Elamite language, a language isolate that remains poorly understood today. 
These inscriptions, along with archaeological discoveries such as temples, palaces and artifacts, provide glimpses into the religious life of the Elamites. However, much of Elam's history and mythology remain shrouded in obscurity due to the scarcity of sources and the challenges of deciphering the Elamite script. References to Kiririsha are scattered across various Elamite texts, including inscriptions, hymns, and religious rituals. One of the most significant sources is the inscription of Untash Napirisha, a ruler of the ancient city of Susa during the Middle Elamite period, c. 14th-12th century BCE. The inscription, carved on the walls of the temple complex dedicated to the Elamite god in Shushinak, mentions Kiririsha alongside other deities, suggesting her importance within the pantheon. In addition to inscriptions, Kiririsha is also referenced in Elamite hymns and prayers discovered in archaeological excavations. These texts often invoke her name alongside other gods and goddesses, indicating her role within the divine hierarchy. However, the specific attributes and functions assigned to Kiririsha in these hymns are often ambiguous and open to interpretation. Despite the lack of detailed descriptions in textual sources, scholars have attempted to reconstruct the attributes and iconography associated with Kiririsha based on comparative analyses with other Mesopotamian deities and artistic representations found in Elamite artifacts. Kiririsha is often depicted as a female deity, sometimes accompanied by symbolic elements such as wings or a solar disk, suggesting associations with celestial phenomena or divine sovereignty. In some representations, she is portrayed standing on a mythical creature, possibly symbolizing her role as a mediator between the earthly and divine realms. The scarcity of direct references to Kiririsha in Elamite texts has led to various interpretations and theories regarding her nature and significance. Some scholars have proposed that Kiririsha may have been a fertility goddess associated with the nurturing aspects of nature, analogous to the Sumerian goddess Inanna or the Babylonian Ishtar. This interpretation is supported by the presence of agricultural motifs in Elamite art and the importance of fertility rites in ancient societies. Others have suggested that Kiririsha could have been a warrior goddess or a protective deity invoked in times of conflict or adversity. This interpretation is based on the warlike imagery found in some Elamite inscriptions and the presence of defensive fortifications in Elamite cities. Another theory posits that Kiririsha may have been a celestial deity associated with the sun or the heavens, analogous to the Babylonian Shamash or the Egyptian Ra. This interpretation is supported by the solar symbolism found in some depictions of Kiririsha and the importance of celestial bodies in ancient cosmologies. It is important to note that these interpretations are speculative and based on fragmentary evidence. The true nature of Kiririsha remains uncertain and further research and discoveries may shed light on her role within Elamite religion and mythology. To gain a deeper understanding of Kiririsha, it is instructive to compare her with deities from neighboring cultures, particularly Mesopotamia, with which Elam had extensive cultural interactions. In Mesopotamian mythology, several goddesses share similarities with Kiririsha in terms of their roles and attributes. One such goddess is Inanna, the Sumerian and later Akkadian goddess of love, fertility and war. Like Kiririsha, Inanna is depicted as a multifaceted deity with both nurturing and martial aspects. She is associated with the planet Venus, often depicted with wings, and plays a prominent role in Mesopotamian myths and hymns. Another comparable deity is Ishtar, the Babylonian counterpart of Inanna, who shares many of her attributes and functions. Ishtar is also associated with love, fertility, and war, 
and is invoked in rituals for protection and prosperity. Like Kiririsha, she is depicted with wings and is sometimes associated with celestial bodies such as the sun and the stars. These parallels suggest that Kiririsha may have been part of a broader cultural continuum that included similar goddesses worshipped throughout the ancient Near East. However, it is important to approach comparative analysis with caution, as similarities between deities do not necessarily imply direct influence or equivalence. Napier Napier emerges as a fascinating figure, embodying concepts of fertility, agriculture and sovereignty of Elamite mythology. Elamite civilization flourished in the southwestern region of present-day Iran, with its peak occurring during the 3rd millennium BCE. The Elamites developed a distinctive culture, language and religious belief system, which intermingled with the neighboring Mesopotamian cultures, particularly Sumerian and Akkadian. Napier's origins can be traced back to the earliest layers of Elamite mythology, where she appears as a goddess associated with the earth, fertility and the cycle of life. Her name is thought to derive from the Elamite word Napi, meaning earth, reflecting her close connection with the land and its abundance. Napier is often depicted as a motherly figure, symbolizing the nurturing aspect of the earth. She is commonly represented as a woman adorned with symbols of fertility, such as grain sheaves, fruit, and flowers. In some depictions, she holds a horn of plenty overflowing with harvest bounty, emphasizing her role as the provider of sustenance. As a goddess of fertility and agriculture, Napier's symbols include the plow, the sickle, and the sheaf of wheat. These agricultural implements underscore her association with the cycles of planting, growth, and harvest, which were central to the livelihood of the Elamite people. The mythological narratives surrounding Napier are varied and often intertwined with other Elamite deities and myths. One prominent story features Napier as the consort of Inshushinak, the supreme god of the Elamite pantheon. In this myth, Napier and Inshushinak are depicted as a divine couple whose union brings fertility and prosperity to the land. Their relationship symbolizes the harmonious balance between masculine and feminine forces in the cosmos, essential for maintaining cosmic order. Another narrative portrays Napier as a protective mother goddess, safeguarding the well-being of the Elamite people and their agricultural endeavors. In times of drought or famine, prayers and offerings were made to Napier, beseeching her to ensure a bountiful harvest and abundant fertility. Within the pantheon of Elamite gods and goddesses, Napier interacts with various deities, each representing different aspects of the natural and supernatural world. One notable interaction is with Humban. In some myths, Napier descends into the underworld to negotiate with Humban, seeking the return of vegetation and fertility to the earth during the barren months of winter. Napier's association with other female deities, such as Kiririsha, goddess of the underworld, and Pinikir, goddess of weaving, highlights her multifaceted nature and her interconnectedness with different domains of existence. The worship of Napier was an integral part of Elamite religious life, with rituals and ceremonies conducted to honor her and ensure her favor upon the land. Temples dedicated to Napier were centers of agricultural activity, where priests and priestesses performed rites to promote fertility and abundance. Offerings of grain, fruits and livestock were made to Napier, accompanied by prayers and invocations for her blessings upon the fields and orchards. Ceremonial processions and festivals celebrating the cycles of planting and harvest were also held in her honor, reinforcing the symbiotic relationship between the divine and the agricultural realms. Napier is depicted in various forms of Elamite art, including reliefs, sculptures and seals. 
In these representations, she is often portrayed in a regal stance, wearing a horned crown symbolizing her divine status. Her attire consists of flowing robes adorned with motifs of fertility and abundance, reflecting her role as a beneficent goddess of the earth. In some depictions, Napir is accompanied by attendant figures, such as divine animals or celestial beings, further emphasizing her divine authority and cosmic significance. Although Elamite civilization eventually declined and was absorbed into the broader cultural milieu of the Near East, the legacy of Napier and Elamite mythology endured through subsequent periods of history. Elements of Elamite religious belief and iconography were assimilated into the religious practices of neighboring cultures, leaving traces of Napier's influence on later mythological traditions. In contemporary times, scholars and archaeologists continue to unravel the mysteries of Elamite mythology, shedding light on the significance of Napier and other deities within the religious and cultural landscape of ancient Iran. The pantheon of Hindu mythology, Vishnu. Vishnu holds a central position as the preserver and protector of the universe. Vishnu's stories, attributes, and manifestations are woven deeply into the fabric of Hindu belief and culture, offering profound insights into the nature of existence, the cycle of creation, preservation, and destruction, and the ultimate goal of liberation. Vishnu is one of the principal deities in Hinduism, often depicted as blue-skinned with four arms holding a conch shell, discus, mace, and lotus flower. He is adorned with royal attire and often shown reclining on the serpent Shisha, floating upon the cosmic waters. Vishnu's iconography reflects his divine attributes and roles as the sustainer and preserver of the universe. According to Hindu mythology, Vishnu is said to dwell in Vaikuntha, his celestial abode, where he reigns supreme alongside his consort, Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth and prosperity. Together, they embody the principles of harmony, balance, and divine order. In Hindu cosmology, the universe undergoes cyclical phases of creation, preservation, and dissolution, known as yugas. Vishnu plays a crucial role in maintaining cosmic balance during each cycle. He is believed to have incarnated on Earth numerous times in various forms, known as avatars, to restore righteousness, dharma, and vanquish evil. Adharma. The most famous of Vishnu's avatars are Rama, the noble prince of Ayodhya, and Krishna, the divine cowherd and statesman of the Mahabharata epic. These incarnations exemplify Vishnu's compassion, wisdom, and dedication to upholding cosmic order. The ten principal avatars of Vishnu, known as the Dashavatara, symbolize the diversity of life forms and the evolutionary progression of consciousness. Each avatar is associated with a specific purpose and narrative, serving as a guide for humanity in times of crisis and moral ambiguity. The Dash Avatara includes iconic figures such as Matsya, the fish, Korm, the tortoise, Verha, the boar, Narasimha, the half-man, half-lion, Vamana, the dwarf, Parshurama, the warrior sage, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, and Kulki the future incarnation yet to come. These avatars showcase Vishnu's adaptability and omnipotence in addressing the challenges of the mortal realm. The myths and legends surrounding Vishnu are replete with symbolism and allegory, offering profound insights into the human condition and the cosmic drama of existence. His battles with demons represent the eternal struggle between good and evil while his divine interventions exemplify the triumph of virtue over vice. For example, the story of Vishnu's incarnation as Rama illustrates the ideals of righteousness, loyalty, and sacrifice, as he embarks on a quest to rescue his kidnapped wife, Sita, from the demon king Ravana. Similarly, Krishna's exploits in the Mahabharata reveal the complexities of moral dilemmas and the importance of fulfilling one's duty dharma, without attachment to the fruits of action. Vishnu is venerated by millions of devotees worldwide through elaborate rituals, prayers, and hymns. 
Temples dedicated to Vishnu, such as the famous Tirupada Balaji Temple in South India and the Vaishnavite pilgrimage site of Badrinath in the Himalayas, attract throngs of pilgrims seeking blessings and spiritual solace. Devotees often invoke Vishnu's names and epithets, such as Narayana, Govinda, and Hari, in their daily prayers, acknowledging his presence in all aspects of creation. The Vishnu Sahasranama, a sacred hymn comprising a thousand names of Vishnu, is recited with reverence by believers seeking divine protection and guidance. Beyond the realm of myth and ritual, Vishnu's significance extends into the realms of philosophy and metaphysics. In Hindu theology, Vishnu represents the principle of preservation, sthitai. Within the cosmic trinity of Brahma, creation, Vishnu, preservation, and Shiva, destruction. Philosophers and theologians have interpreted Vishnu's role as the preserver in various ways, ranging from metaphysical theories of cosmic balance to psychological concepts of equilibrium and harmony. The notion of Vishnu as the eternal sustainer underscores the interconnectedness of all beings and the cyclical nature of existence. Vishnu's influence extends beyond the boundaries of traditional Hinduism, permeating contemporary culture in art, literature, music, and film. Artists and writers continue to draw inspiration from Vishnu's stories and symbols, reinterpreting ancient myths in modern contexts. Filmmakers, such as Satyajit Ray and Ramanan Sagar, have adapted Vishnu's narratives into cinematic masterpieces, while authors like Amish Tripathi and Devduta Puttanik have explored Vishnu's mythology through innovative retellings and scholarly analyses. Vishnu's enduring appeal lies in his timeless relevance and universal themes of morality, redemption, and divine grace. Lord Shiva Lord Shiva known as the Destroyer and the Transformer, Shiva is one of the principal deities in Hinduism, alongside Brahma, the Creator, and Vishnu, the Preserver. His enigmatic persona, symbolized by his serene yet fearsome appearance, his association with destruction and creation, and his profound symbolism makes him a figure of profound spiritual significance. Through various scriptures, legends, and cultural narratives, Shiva emerges as a complex and multifaceted deity, embodying both the divine and the human aspects of existence. To understand Shiva's significance within Hindu mythology, it is essential to trace his origins and his place within the cosmic hierarchy. According to Hindu cosmology, the universe undergoes cyclical creation, preservation, and dissolution, perpetuated by the trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. While Brahma is the creator of the universe and Vishnu its preserver, Shiva is the force of destruction, facilitating the regeneration and renewal of existence. In Hindu mythology, Shiva is often depicted as an ascetic, residing in the remote Himalayas in deep meditation. His origin stories vary across different scriptures and traditions, adding layers to his divine persona. In the Shaiva tradition, Shiva is believed to be eternal and formless, existing beyond the confines of time and space. He is often depicted as the Lingam, a symbol of cosmic energy and the unmanifested universe. According to the Puranas, Shiva is said to have emerged from the cosmic pillar of light, known as the Lingad Bhava, symbolizing his transcendental nature and his role as the progenitor of creation. In other accounts, Shiva is depicted as being born from the union of the primordial energies, Shakti and Shiva, representing the dynamic interplay between the masculine and feminine aspects of existence. The genealogy of Shiva is also varied and complex, reflecting the diverse mythological narratives surrounding his lineage. In some accounts, he is said to be the son of Brahma and the sister of Vishnu, while in others, he is believed to be self-born, existing before the creation of the universe. His consort, Parvati, also known as Shakti or Devi, is an integral aspect of his mythology, representing the creative and nurturing aspect of the divine feminine. Together, Shiva and Parvati form the divine couple, 
symbolizing the union of opposites and the harmonious balance of masculine and feminine energies within the cosmos. Shiva is characterized by his distinctive iconography, which reflects his multifaceted nature and his role as both the destroyer and the benefactor. He is often depicted as a yogi adorned with serpents, wearing a crescent moon on his matted locks and smearing his body with ash. The crescent moon symbolizes the cyclical nature of time, while the serpents represent his mastery over the primal forces of nature. His matted hair, known as Jada, signifies his ascetic lifestyle and his renunciation of worldly attachments. Shiva's iconic image also includes his third eye, known as the Eye of Wisdom or the Eye of Destruction. According to mythology, when Shiva opens his third eye, it emits a powerful beam of light that can annihilate anything in its path. This symbolism highlights Shiva's role as the destroyer of ignorance and the revealer of truth, as well as his capacity to bring about radical transformation and renewal. Another significant attribute of Shiva is his trident, known as the Trishula, which symbolizes his control over the three gunas or qualities of existence, sattva, purity, rajas, activity, and tamas, inertia. The Trishula also represents Shiva's power to destroy evil forces and uphold cosmic order. Additionally, Shiva is often depicted with a damaru, a small drum symbolizing the rhythm of creation and the cosmic dance of Shiva known as the Tandava. As one of the principal deities in Hindu mythology, Shiva plays diverse roles and functions that reflect his dynamic and multifaceted nature. Primarily, Shiva is revered as the supreme ascetic, embodying the ideals of meditation, austerity, and self-discipline. His abode in Mount Kailash, the mythical peak in the Himalayas, symbolizes his transcendence of worldly attachments and his deep connection with the spiritual realm. Moreover, Shiva is worshipped as the Lord of Destruction, responsible for the dissolution of the universe at the end of each cosmic cycle. This destructive aspect of Shiva is not seen as malevolent, but rather as an essential aspect of the cosmic order, facilitating the process of regeneration and renewal. In this sense, Shiva is regarded as the destroyer of ignorance and the purifier of souls, guiding beings towards spiritual liberation and enlightenment. Furthermore, Shiva embodies the role of the divine healer and benefactor, offering solace and protection to his devotees in times of distress. As the god of healing and rejuvenation, Shiva is associated with the sacred rivers of Ganga and Yamuna, whose waters are believed to possess purifying and healing properties. Moreover, Shiva is often invoked as the protector of animals and the environment, symbolizing the harmonious relationship between humans and nature. The symbolism surrounding Shiva is rich with allegorical meaning, reflecting profound philosophical and metaphysical concepts within Hinduism. One of the central motifs associated with Shiva is the concept of dualism and non-dualism, represented by the union of Shiva and Shakti, or Purusha and Prakriti. This union symbolizes the integration of masculine and feminine energies, as well as the reconciliation of opposites within the cosmic order. Additionally, Shiva's role as the Lord of Destruction and Regeneration symbolizes the cyclical nature of existence, where death is not the end but rather a prelude to rebirth and renewal. This symbolism underscores the transient and impermanent nature of the material world urging individuals to transcend attachment and seek spiritual liberation. Moreover, Shiva's cosmic dance, known as the Tandava, symbolizes the rhythmic movement of the universe and the eternal cycle of creation, preservation, and destruction. The Tandava also represents the dynamic interplay of forces within the cosmos, illustrating the inherent harmony and balance underlying all existence. Furthermore, Shiva's association with the serpent, particularly the serpent Vasuki, symbolizes his mastery over the primal energies of the Kundalini, the dormant serpent power residing at the base of the spine. Through the practice of yoga and meditation, individuals can awaken this latent energy and attain spiritual enlightenment, 
transcending the limitations of the material world. Worship of Shiva takes various forms within Hinduism, ranging from elaborate temple rituals to simple daily prayers and meditation. One of the most common forms of worship is the offering of bilva leaves, which are believed to be sacred to Shiva and possess purifying properties. Devotees also offer milk, water, and other symbolic offerings to Shiva's iconic image, accompanied by the chanting of mantras and hymns praising his divine attributes. The festival of Maha Shivaratri, celebrated annually in honor of Shiva, is one of the most significant religious observances for devotees. During this auspicious occasion, devotees fast, meditate, and engage in nightlong vigils, seeking the blessings of Shiva and the attainment of spiritual enlightenment. It is believed that on this night, Shiva performs the cosmic dance of Tandava, signifying the destruction of ignorance and the revelation of divine truth. Moreover, pilgrimage to sacred sites associated with Shiva, such as Mount Kailash, Varanasi, and Chidambaram, holds great significance for devotees seeking spiritual purification and divine blessings. These sacred sites are believed to be imbued with the presence of Shiva and serve as conduits for spiritual transformation and transcendence. Durga Durga, often hailed as the Supreme Goddess, holds a prominent position in Hindu pantheon. Her portrayal, mythological narratives, and symbolic significance have captivated devotees and scholars alike for centuries. To understand Durga's significance, it's essential to trace her origins in Hindu mythology. The roots of Durga can be found in ancient texts such as the Rigveda, where she is referred to as Durga Tanishini, the alleviator of distress. However, her prominent role emerges in later scriptures like the Devi Mahatmya, a part of the Markandiya Purana. The Devi Mahatmya narrates the story of Durga's manifestation as the warrior goddess to vanquish the buffalo demon Mahishasura, symbolizing the triumph of good over evil. This mythological tale showcases Durga's valor and her pivotal role in preserving cosmic order, Dharma. Over time, Durga became a central figure in Hindu mythology, assimilating various regional and cultural elements into her persona. She is revered in different forms and names across India, including Mahishajra Mardini, Amba, Chindika, and Bhavani, among others. This diversity reflects the adaptability and inclusivity of Hindu religious traditions. Durga's iconography is rich in symbolism, each aspect representing profound philosophical and spiritual concepts. She is typically depicted as a radiant goddess riding a lion or tiger, wielding an array of weapons in her multiple arms. Her serene countenance belies her ferocious aspect, symbolizing the balance of power and compassion. The choice of mount, the lion or tiger, signifies her courage, fearlessness, and regal demeanor. Her many arms represent her ability to multitask and to wield various weapons, signifying her omnipotence in combating evil forces. The weapons she carries, such as the trishul, trident, chakra, discus, and bow, symbolize different aspects of cosmic power and the ability to overcome obstacles. Moreover, Durga's triumph over Mahishasura symbolizes the victory of divine forces over demonic energies within oneself. Thus, she serves as a beacon of hope and inspiration for spiritual seekers striving to overcome their inner battles. Durga's mythology is replete with captivating narratives that showcase her prowess and compassion. One of the most celebrated tales is the slaying of Mahishasura, a powerful demon who had acquired invincibility through a boon from Lord Brahma. Durga, armed with divine weapons and accompanied by various gods and goddesses, engages in a fierce battle with Mahishasura, ultimately defeating him and restoring cosmic harmony. Another popular narrative is Durga's role in the battle against the demon Raktabija. According to legend, Raktabija had the ability to multiply himself from every drop of blood spilled from his body, posing a significant challenge to the gods. In response, Durga assumes the form of Kali, the fierce aspect of the goddess, 
and annihilates Raktabija by drinking his blood before it can spawn more demons. These myths illustrate Durga's role as a protector of the divine order and a vanquisher of evil forces, emphasizing the importance of righteousness and courage in the face of adversity. Durga holds immense cultural significance in Hinduism, with several festivals dedicated to her worship being celebrated across India and beyond. The most prominent among these is Durga Puja, a grand festival observed primarily in the eastern states of West Bengal, Assam, and Idissa, as well as in other parts of India and the world with Hindu diaspora. Durga Puja typically spans nine days, known as Navaratri, during which devotees worship the goddess in her various forms, seek her blessings, and celebrate her victory over evil. Elaborate pandals, temporary structures, are erected to house beautifully crafted idols of Durga and her entourage, attracting millions of devotees and tourists. The festival culminates in Vijayadashami, the tenth day, which marks the triumph of Durga over Mahishasura and the victory of good over evil. The idols are immersed in water bodies amidst grand processions and festivities, symbolizing the goddess's return to her celestial abode. Apart from Durga Puja, other festivals such as Navaratri and Mahalaya are also observed with fervor, with devotees fasting, performing rituals, and reciting hymns in honor of the goddess. Beyond her mythological narratives and cultural festivities, Durga holds profound philosophical and spiritual significance in Hinduism. She represents the divine feminine energy, Shakti, the primordial cosmic force that animates the universe and sustains all creation. Durga's portrayal as a warrior goddess underscores the concept of divine intervention in the cosmic drama, where she embodies the transformative power of righteousness and courage. Her triumph over demons symbolizes the conquest of inner demons such as ego, ignorance, and desire, leading the seeker towards self-realization and spiritual liberation. Furthermore, Durga's association with the Navadurga's nine forms of the goddess highlights the various aspects of feminine energy, ranging from fierce and protective to nurturing and benevolent. Each form of Durga embodies specific attributes and qualities, providing devotees with a holistic understanding of the divine feminine principle. Lakshmi Lakshmi, revered as the goddess of wealth, prosperity, and fortune, holds a significant place in Hindu mythology and spirituality. Known by various epithets such as Sri, Shri, and Padma, Lakshmi symbolizes auspiciousness, abundance, and beauty. Her presence is celebrated not only in religious rituals, but also in everyday life, as she embodies the aspirations for material and spiritual prosperity. The origins of Lakshmi can be traced back to the Vedas, the ancient scriptures of Hinduism, where she is mentioned as a deity associated with fertility, abundance, and prosperity. Over time, her character evolved and became more prominent in Hindu mythology, especially in the Puranic texts. The earliest references to Lakshmi are found in the Rigveda, where she is described as the goddess of wealth and good fortune, often associated with agricultural abundance. Lakshmi's association with Vishnu, one of the principal deities of Hinduism, further solidified her importance in Hindu mythology. According to mythological narratives, Lakshmi emerged during the churning of the cosmic ocean, Samudra Manthan, by the gods and demons, symbolizing the emergence of prosperity from chaos. She chose Vishnu as her consort, signifying the inseparable relationship between wealth and the divine. Lakshmi is typically depicted as a beautiful woman adorned with luxurious attire and jewelry, seated or standing on a lotus flower. The lotus, a symbol of purity and enlightenment, represents her transcendental nature as she remains unaffected by the material world. Her four hands symbolize various aspects of life and prosperity. In one hand, she holds a lotus, representing purity and fertility. In another, she holds a pot of gold, symbolizing wealth and prosperity. The other two hands are in the gestures of Abhyamadra, fearlessness, and Virata Madra, granting boons, 
signifying her blessings and protection to her devotees. Numerous myths and legends revolve around Lakshmi, portraying her benevolence, compassion, and grace. One of the most famous myths is the churning of the ocean, Samudra Manthan, where she emerges from the cosmic waters holding a lotus and chooses Vishnu as her consort. Another popular myth is the story of her birth from the ocean of milk, Chirasagara, where she arises from the churning of the ocean along with other divine beings and bestows blessings upon the gods. In another mythological narrative, Lakshmi takes various forms to assist Vishnu in his divine mission to protect the universe. As Sita, she accompanies Vishnu in the avatar of Rama during the Ramayana, symbolizing the ideal wife and embodiment of virtue. As Radha, she epitomizes divine love and devotion in the tales of Krishna's exploits in the Bhagavata Purana. Lakshmi is venerated across India and among Hindu communities worldwide through various festivals, rituals, and prayers. Diwali, the Festival of Lights, is one of the most significant celebrations dedicated to her worship. During Diwali, devotees invoke Lakshmi's blessings by lighting lamps, decorating their homes, and performing puja, worship, rituals. Apart from Diwali, Lakshmi Puja is performed regularly in homes and temples to seek her blessings for prosperity, well-being, and success. Devotees recite hymns, offer flowers, incense, and sweets to appease the goddess and invite her grace into their lives. Lakshmi's significance extends beyond material wealth to encompass spiritual abundance and well-being. She is revered not only as the bestower of material prosperity, but also as the embodiment of divine grace, compassion, and inner wealth. Through devotion to Lakshmi, Hindus seek not only worldly success, but also spiritual enlightenment and liberation from suffering. Sarasvati Sarasvati, one of the most revered goddesses in Hindu mythology, embodies the essence of knowledge, wisdom, art, music, and learning. She is often depicted as a graceful deity, adorned with white attire, seated on a lotus, holding a veena, a stringed musical instrument, and accompanied by a swan. Sarasvati's significance transcends mere academic learning. She represents the flow of creativity, inspiration, and the pursuit of truth. The origins of Sarasvati can be traced back to the Vedic period, where she was initially associated with the sacred river of the same name. In the Rigveda, Sarasvati is revered as a mighty river, symbolizing fertility, purification, and sustenance. Over time, her persona evolved, and she came to embody the divine essence of knowledge and wisdom. Scholars suggest that Sarasvati's transformation from a river goddess to the patroness of learning and arts reflects the evolving socio-religious landscape of ancient India. As civilization progressed, the pursuit of intellectual and artistic endeavors gained prominence, leading to the elevation of Sarasvati as the goddess of learning. Various mythological narratives elucidate Sarasvati's divine origins and her role in shaping the cosmos. One prevalent myth portrays Sarasvati as the daughter of Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe. According to this legend, Brahma, desiring a companion for his creative endeavors, meditated intensely. From his meditation emerged Sarasvati, radiant and ethereal, embodying the essence of his creative power. Another popular myth recounts Sarasvati's marriage to Lord Vishnu, the preserver of the universe. In this narrative, Vishnu assumes the form of Hayagriva, a horse-headed deity, to retrieve the lost Vedas, sacred texts, stolen by demons. Sarasvati aids Vishnu in this quest, symbolizing the indispensable relationship between knowledge and preservation. Additionally, Sarasvati is revered as the divine consort of Lord Shiva, the destroyer in the Hindu trinity. As Sharada, the goddess of wisdom, she bestows insight and enlightenment upon Shiva, complementing his fierce and ascetic nature with her serene wisdom. Sarasvati's iconography is rich in symbolism, each element carrying profound meaning. She is often depicted seated on a white lotus, 
symbolizing purity and transcendence. The lotus, emerging from the murky waters, represents the journey from ignorance to enlightenment, mirroring Sarasvati's role in dispelling darkness with the light of knowledge. Her four arms symbolize omnipresence and represent the four aspects of human personality, mind, intellect, alertness, and ego. In one hand, she holds the sacred scriptures, signifying the importance of learning and education. In another hand, she carries the vena, symbolizing the harmonious integration of arts and knowledge. Sarasvati's association with the swan embodies grace, discernment, and discrimination. The swan, renowned for its ability to separate milk from water, represents Sarasvati's role in discerning truth from falsehood, wisdom from ignorance. Devotees across India celebrate Sarasvati Puja with great fervor, typically during the spring season. Schools, colleges, and educational institutions organize elaborate ceremonies to invoke Sarasvati's blessings upon students and teachers. The goddess is worshipped with offerings of flowers, fruits, and incense, accompanied by hymns and prayers extolling her virtues. During Sarasvati Puja, children are initiated into the world of learning, marking the beginning of their educational journey. Books, pins, and musical instruments are placed at the goddess's feet, symbolizing the reverence accorded to knowledge and creativity. Despite the passage of millennia, Sarasvati's influence continues to permeate contemporary Hindu culture and society. Her imagery adorns educational institutions, libraries, and cultural centers, serving as a constant reminder of the importance of learning and enlightenment. Moreover, Sarasvati's ethos finds expression in various art forms, including classical music, dance, painting, and literature. Artists and writers draw inspiration from her divine grace, infusing their creations with the spirit of creativity and wisdom. Guanin, also known as Guanxian or Guanzizi, is a prominent figure in Chinese mythology and Buddhism. Revered as the Bodhisattva of compassion, Guanin embodies mercy, kindness, and unconditional love. Throughout China and beyond, Guanin holds a revered status, often depicted as a serene figure with a gentle countenance, holding a vase of pure water or a willow branch, symbolizing purity and healing. The origins of Guanin trace back to ancient India, where the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara was first venerated. As Buddhism spread to China via the Silk Road during the Han Dynasty, 206 BCE, 220 CE, Avalokiteshvara underwent a transformation, merging with indigenous Chinese beliefs and deities. This amalgamation resulted in the creation of Guanyin, blending Buddhist principles of compassion with Taoist and Confucian ideals of benevolence and mercy. Over centuries, Guanyin evolved further, adapting to various cultural contexts and religious syncretism. Different regions in China developed their own interpretations and representations of Guanyin, resulting in a diverse array of depictions and stories. In Chinese Buddhism, Guanyin occupies a central position as one of the four great bodhisattvas, alongside Manjusri, Samantabhadra, and Xitagarbha. As a bodhisattva, Guanyin is believed to have postponed enlightenment to alleviate the suffering of sentient beings, pledging to remain in the cycle of birth and death until all beings achieve liberation. Devotees turn to Guanyin for guidance, protection, and solace, especially during times of distress and hardship. Many Buddhists recite the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, associated with Avalokiteshvara, to invoke Guanyin's compassionate presence. The iconography of Guanyin varies widely, reflecting the diverse cultural influences and regional traditions within China. Common depictions include Guanyin standing on a lotus pedestal, seated on a throne, or descending from the heavens on clouds. Guanyin is often portrayed with a serene expression, adorned in flowing robes, and wearing a crown or headdress symbolizing divinity. In one hand, Guanyin may hold a willow branch or a lotus flower, representing purity and enlightenment, 
while the other hand may be extended in a gesture of compassion or holding a vase containing pure water, symbolizing healing and nourishment. The symbolism associated with Guanyin is rich with meaning, reflecting the Bodhisattva's compassionate nature and role as a protector of sentient beings. The willow branch signifies flexibility and resilience, teaching the importance of adapting to change and adversity. The lotus flower symbolizes purity and enlightenment, emerging from muddy waters unblemished, representing the possibility of transcending suffering and attaining spiritual awakening. The vase held by Guanyin is often depicted overflowing with pure water, symbolizing the boundless compassion and mercy that Guanyin extends to all beings. Water is also associated with cleansing and purification, signifying Guanyin's ability to wash away impurities and alleviate suffering. Numerous legends and stories surround Guanyin, illustrating the Bodhisattva's compassionate deeds and miraculous interventions. One of the most famous legends recounts how Guanyin vowed to never rest until she had freed all sentient beings from suffering. Despite her tireless efforts, Guanyin realized the magnitude of the task and shattered into thousands of pieces. However, the Buddha Amitba intervened and reassembled Guanyin, granting her eleven heads and a thousand arms, each with an eye in the palm to witness the suffering of the world. Another popular legend tells of Miao Shan, a devout Buddhist who underwent trials and tribulations to save her father's soul. After sacrificing herself, Miao Shan was reborn as Guanyin, embodying the ideals of compassion and selflessness. Devotion to Guanyin is widespread throughout China and other parts of East Asia, with countless temples, shrines, and statues dedicated to the Bodhisattva. Pilgrims from all walks of life flock to these sacred sites to pay homage to Guanyin, seeking blessings for themselves and their loved ones. Offerings of flowers, incense, and candles are commonly made to Guanyin as gestures of reverence and gratitude. Many believers also engage in practices such as chanting, meditation, and recitation of sutras as a means of deepening their connection with Guanyin and cultivating compassion in their own lives. Beyond the realm of Buddhism, Guanyin's influence extends into various aspects of Chinese culture, including literature, art, and folklore. Guanyin's image is often invoked in poetry, music, and painting, inspiring artists and writers to explore themes of compassion, empathy, and spiritual enlightenment. Moreover, Guanyin's compassionate ethos has inspired numerous charitable endeavors and social welfare initiatives aimed at alleviating suffering and promoting harmony within society. Guanyin serves as a beacon of hope and inspiration for millions of people, transcending religious boundaries and cultural differences. Nuwa Nuwa is a complex deity, embodying both creative and protective forces, and her stories are woven deeply into the cultural fabric of China. From her role as a creator goddess to her significance in cosmology and morality, Nuwa's influence is profound and enduring. Nuwa's origins are shrouded in the mists of ancient Chinese mythology. She is often depicted as a goddess with the body of a serpent and the head of a woman, symbolizing her connection to both earthly and divine realms. According to myth, Nuwa emerged from chaos at the beginning of creation, alongside her brother and consort, Fushi. Together, they are credited with creating humanity and restoring order to the world. The earliest references to Nuwa can be found in ancient texts such as the Shanheijing, Classic of Mountains and Seas, and the Huainanzi, Book of the Master of Huainan. These texts describe her as a powerful deity who possesses the ability to shapeshift and control the elements. She is often associated with the earth, and her name is sometimes used interchangeably with the term Earth Mother. One of the most famous myths involving Nuwa is the story of the mending of the heavens. According to legend, a great catastrophe once threatened to destroy the world, causing the pillars that supported the sky to collapse. In a desperate bid to save humanity, Nuwa melted down colorful stones to patch up the sky and prevent it from falling. 
This act of heroism not only saved the world, but also earned Nuwa the eternal gratitude of mortals. As a creator goddess, Nuwa is credited with shaping the first human beings out of clay. According to myth, she molded each person individually, carefully crafting their features and breathing life into them. This act of creation not only established Nuwa as a benevolent deity, but also imbued her with a deep sense of responsibility for humanity. In addition to her role as a creator, Nuwa is also revered as a protector of mankind. In times of crisis, mortals often call upon her for aid and guidance, believing that her divine power can shield them from harm. Temples and shrines dedicated to Nuwa can be found throughout China, where worshippers offer prayers and sacrifices in her honor. Nuwa's influence extends beyond the realm of mortals to the natural world as well. She is often associated with fertility, agriculture, and the changing of the seasons, symbolizing the cyclical nature of life and death. Farmers and peasants invoke her name during planting and harvest ceremonies, seeking her blessings for a bountiful yield. In addition to her role as a creator and protector, Nuwa also plays a significant role in Chinese cosmology. According to myth, she and her brother Fushi are responsible for establishing the cosmic order and maintaining the balance between yin and yang, the complementary forces that govern the universe. Nuwa's connection to the earth and the heavens is symbolized by her dual nature as both a serpent and a goddess. Serpents are often associated with the earth and the underworld in Chinese mythology, while goddesses are typically associated with the heavens and the celestial realm. By embodying both aspects, Nuwa serves as a bridge between the mortal world and the divine. Furthermore, Nuwa's role in the mending of the heavens, myth highlights her importance in maintaining the stability of the cosmos. The act of repairing the sky not only saved humanity but also prevented the collapse of the entire universe. In this sense, Nuwa can be seen as a cosmic guardian, ensuring that the forces of chaos are kept at bay. Nuwa's mythology also contains important lessons about morality and ethics. As a benevolent deity, she is often depicted as a compassionate and merciful figure who cares deeply for her creations. In times of hardship, she offers guidance and support to those in need, teaching them the virtues of kindness, generosity, and perseverance. At the same time, Nuwa is also capable of great wrath and vengeance when provoked. In some versions of her mythology, she is portrayed as a fierce warrior who defends humanity from malevolent forces and punishes those who seek to harm them. This duality of nature reflects the complex moral landscape of Chinese mythology, where good and evil are often intertwined. Nuwa's influence extends far beyond the realm of mythology, permeating every aspect of Chinese culture and society. Her image can be found in art, literature, and religious iconography, where she is often depicted as a powerful and revered deity. Her stories continue to inspire awe and reverence among the Chinese people, who honor her memory through rituals, festivals, and ceremonies. Moreover, Nuwa's legacy is not confined to China alone, but has also spread to other East Asian countries such as Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. In each of these cultures, she is known by different names and has slightly different attributes, but her essential role as a creator and protector remains unchanged. Changshi, Changshi also known as the goddess of weaving, holds a significant place in Chinese folklore, symbolizing not only the artistry of weaving but also embodying themes of love, sacrifice, and celestial order. The legend of Changshi finds its roots in ancient Chinese mythology, particularly in the mythological realm of the sky. In Chinese cosmology, the sky is often depicted as a vast realm inhabited by divine beings who govern the celestial bodies and phenomena. Changxi is believed to reside within this celestial domain, where she fulfills her role as the weaver of the heavenly silks. One of the central myths surrounding Changxi is intertwined with the story of the weaver girl and the cowherd, a tale celebrated during the Qixi festival, also known as the Chinese Valentine's Day. According to this legend, 
Changxi is depicted as the weaver girl, Jinu, who falls in love with a mortal cowherd named Nilong. Their forbidden love incurs the wrath of the celestial queen mother, who separates them by placing them on opposite sides of the Milky Way. However, once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, magpies form a bridge across the Milky Way, allowing the lovers to reunite briefly. Changxi embodies various symbolic attributes that reflect deeper cultural and philosophical themes within Chinese mythology. As the goddess of weaving, she represents the artistry and craftsmanship associated with textile production, which held significant cultural and economic importance in ancient China. Weaving was not merely a practical skill, but also a symbol of creativity, femininity, and industry. Moreover, Changxi's role as the weaver of the heavenly silks honors her connection to the celestial order and cosmic harmony. In Chinese cosmology, the weaving of celestial fabric symbolizes the intricate patterns and cycles of the universe, reflecting the interconnectedness of all things. Changxi's meticulous weaving is believed to maintain the balance and stability of the heavens, ensuring the smooth operation of the celestial realm. Furthermore, the legend of Changxi and the Weaver Girl highlights themes of love, devotion, and sacrifice. The enduring love between Jinu and Yulong serves as a poignant reminder of the human experience of longing and separation, as well as the power of love to transcend boundaries, even those imposed by divine decree. Their story embodies the universal archetype of star-crossed lovers, resonating with audiences across generations. Changxi holds significant cultural significance within Chinese society, influencing various rituals, festivals, and artistic expressions. The Qixi Festival, which celebrates the reunion of the Weaver Girl and the Cowherd, is one of the most prominent festivals associated with Changxi. During this festival, people engage in various customs and activities, such as making offerings to Changxi, displaying woven decorations, and praying for love and happiness. In addition to the Qixi festival, Changxi's imagery and symbolism are often depicted in traditional Chinese art, literature, and performing arts. Paintings, tapestries, and sculptures portraying Changxi weaving the celestial silks adorn temples, palaces, and homes, serving as reminders of her divine presence and influence. Furthermore, Changxi's legend has inspired countless works of poetry, drama, and music, enriching China's cultural heritage. The legacy of Changxi endures to this day, influencing not only traditional cultural practices but also contemporary interpretations and adaptations. In modern times, Changxi continues to captivate the imagination of artists, writers, and filmmakers who reinterpret her story through various mediums. Moreover, Changxi's symbolism remains relevant in the context of contemporary society, serving as a source of inspiration for individuals seeking to connect with themes of creativity, love, and spirituality. The enduring popularity of Changxi's legend underscores its timeless appeal and universal themes, transcending cultural boundaries and resonating with people around the world. Shunnong Shinnong is celebrated for his contributions to agriculture, medicine, and culture. His legendary deeds and divine wisdom have inspired generations of Chinese people, shaping their understanding of farming, healing, and spirituality. The origins of Shinnong are shrouded in myth and legend, intertwined with the creation stories and ancient cosmology of China. According to mythological accounts, Shennong was born in the remote antiquity of Chinese history, during a time when humans lived in harmony with nature and relied on hunting and gathering for sustenance. As the son of a heavenly emperor and a mortal woman, Shennong was endowed with divine powers and a profound connection to the earth. Shennong's emergence as a cultural hero coincided with the dawn of agriculture in ancient China a period marked by the transition from nomadic lifestyles to settled farming communities. As early agrarian societies began to cultivate crops and domesticate animals, Shunnong was revered as a pioneer who taught humanity the arts of farming, irrigation, 
and herbal medicine. His teachings laid the foundation for agricultural civilization in China, fostering prosperity, stability, and cultural advancement. Over the centuries, Shennong's character evolved from a mythical deity to a legendary figure imbued with human-like qualities and virtues. In folk tales and oral traditions, he was depicted as a wise and benevolent ruler who traveled the land, imparting knowledge and wisdom to his people. Through his encounters with mythical creatures, natural phenomena, and supernatural challenges, Shinnong demonstrated his mastery over the elements and his unwavering commitment to the welfare of humanity. As one of the three sovereigns who ruled over ancient China, Shinnong played a pivotal role in establishing the moral and social order of the world. Alongside Fuxi and Yuwa, he guided humanity through the turbulent epochs of primordial chaos, ushering in an era of peace, prosperity, and enlightenment. As the divine farmer, Shinnong embodied the virtues of diligence, ingenuity, and stewardship, setting an example for future generations to follow. Shinnong's mythological legacy is replete with tales of his extraordinary deeds and accomplishments. According to legend, he introduced the cultivation of grains such as rice, wheat, and millet, transforming barren lands into fertile fields that yielded abundant harvests. He taught his people the art of irrigation, enabling them to harness the power of water and control flooding. Moreover, Shinnong was credited with discovering the medicinal properties of hundreds of herbs and plants, laying the groundwork for traditional Chinese medicine. The folklore surrounding Shinnong is as diverse and colorful as the Chinese landscape itself, reflecting the cultural diversity and regional variations of ancient China. In tales passed down through generations, Shennong is depicted as a compassionate healer who selflessly devoted himself to alleviating the suffering of the sick and injured. Whether battling malevolent spirits, curing deadly plagues, or taming wild beasts, Shennong's exploits captured the imagination of storytellers and artists alike, perpetuating his legend for posterity. Shinnong's legacy as the divine farmer is synonymous with agricultural innovation and technological advancement. Through his divine wisdom and practical knowledge, he revolutionized the way humans interacted with the land, transforming subsistence farming into a sophisticated system of cultivation. By inventing tools such as the plow, the hoe, and the sickle, Shinnong enabled farmers to till the soil more efficiently increasing productivity and yields. In addition to his agricultural acumen, Shinnong was renowned for his expertise in herbal medicine and pharmacology. According to legend, he conducted extensive experiments with medicinal plants, meticulously documenting their properties and effects. His seminal work, the Shinnong Bin Chao Jing, classic of Materia Medica, cataloged hundreds of herbs and their therapeutic uses laying the foundation for the practice of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM. From ginseng and licorice to ginger and cinnamon, Shinnong's botanical discoveries have left an indelible mark on the field of herbalism. Beyond its practical applications, farming held profound ethical and spiritual significance in Shinnong's teachings. He emphasized the importance of harmony between humans and nature, advocating for sustainable farming practices that respected the rhythms of the natural world. By cultivating virtues such as humility, gratitude, and reverence for life, Shinnong sought to cultivate not only crops, but also the moral character of his people. In doing so, he fostered a deep sense of connection to the land and a profound appreciation for the gifts of the earth. Shinnong's contributions to herbal medicine and pharmacology are legendary earning him the title of the Divine Apothecary among the Chinese people. His meticulous research and experimentation with medicinal plants laid the groundwork for the development of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, a holistic system of healthcare that emphasizes the balance of body, mind, and spirit. Through his discoveries, Shinnong unlocked the healing potential of nature, providing remedies for a wide range of ailments and illnesses. At the heart of Shinnong's legacy lies the Shinnong Bin Chao Jing, 
a seminal text that remains one of the oldest pharmacopoeias in the world, comprising over 360 entries on medicinal plants, minerals, and animal substances. This ancient compendium offers detailed descriptions of each substance's properties, actions, and therapeutic uses. Compiled during the Han Dynasty, the Bin Shaojing served as a comprehensive reference guide for generations of physicians, pharmacists, and herbalists, shaping the practice of TCM for millennia. Shinong's influence on TCM extends far beyond the pages of the Bin Shaojing, permeating every aspect of this holistic healing tradition. His classification of medicinal substances into categories such as superior, medium, and inferior laid the foundation for the principles of herbal classification and compatibility in TCM. Moreover, his emphasis on the importance of personalized diagnosis and treatment underscored the holistic approach of TCM, which seeks to address the root causes of disease and restore balance to the body's vital energies. Throughout Chinese history, Shinong has been depicted in a variety of artistic and literary works, ranging from paintings and sculptures to poems and plays. In visual art, he is often portrayed as a sage-like figure clad in robes, holding a hoe or a basket of herbs, symbolizing his role as the divine farmer. In literature, he is celebrated as a paragon of wisdom and virtue, whose teachings continue to inspire reverence and admiration. To honor Shinong's contributions to agriculture and medicine, the Chinese people have established rituals and festivals dedicated to his memory. One such festival is the Duanwu Festival, also known as the Dragon Boat Festival, which is celebrated on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. During this festival, people offer sacrifices to Shinong, seeking his blessings for a bountiful harvest and protection from disease. In rural communities, Farmers perform rituals to invoke Shinnong's guidance and ensure a successful growing season. As a cultural icon, Shinnong embodies the timeless values and enduring traditions of Chinese civilization. His teachings on agriculture, medicine, and morality continue to resonate with people across China and beyond, serving as a source of national pride and cultural identity. Whether through folklore, art, or religious rituals, Shinong remains a potent symbol of resilience, wisdom, and cultural continuity in the modern world. In recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in traditional agriculture and sustainable farming practices in China. As concerns about food security, environmental degradation, and public health mount, many farmers are turning to Shinong's principles of organic farming, crop rotation, and biodiversity conservation for guidance. By embracing the wisdom of the divine farmer, they hope to revitalize rural communities, safeguard the environment, and ensure the well-being of future generations. Similarly, there has been a renewed appreciation for herbal medicine and natural remedies in contemporary China. In urban centers and rural villages alike, people are rediscovering the therapeutic benefits of medicinal plants, incorporating them into their daily lives as supplements, teas, and topical treatments. With the rise of holistic wellness trends and alternative healthcare modalities, traditional Chinese medicine, inspired by Shinong's legacy, is experiencing a renaissance in the modern world. Despite the profound changes that have swept across China in recent decades, Shinong's teachings remain as relevant today as they were thousands of years ago. In an increasingly globalized and technologically driven society, his emphasis on sustainability, stewardship, and holistic well-being offers a timeless antidote to the stresses and uncertainties of modern life. As China grapples with the challenges of rapid urbanization, environmental degradation, and social inequality, the wisdom of the divine farmer serves as a guiding light, reminding people of their interconnectedness with the earth and each other. Shinong's mythological archetype shares striking similarities with other agricultural deities and nature spirits found in cultures around the world. From Demeter in Greek mythology to Osiris in Egyptian mythology, these figures embody the timeless principles of fertility, abundance, and renewal, guiding humanity in their quest for sustenance and prosperity. 
By comparing Shunnong with these analogous deities, we gain insight into the universal human experience of agriculture and the enduring role of myth in shaping our relationship with the natural world. While Shunnong is primarily associated with Chinese mythology, his influence extends far beyond the borders of China, permeating the cultural, historical, and linguistic landscape of East Asia. In neighboring countries such as Japan, Korea, and Vietnam, Shinong is venerated as a cultural hero and ancestral deity, revered for his contributions to agriculture and medicine. Moreover, the spread of traditional Chinese medicine and herbalism to other parts of the world has brought Shinong's legacy to a global audience, inspiring countless people to embrace the healing power of nature. In an age of cultural exchange and globalization, Shinong's mythological legacy has been subject to reinterpretation and adaptation by artists, scholars, and storytellers from diverse cultural backgrounds. Whether through literature, film, or digital media, creators have drawn inspiration from Shinong's timeless wisdom and legendary exploits, weaving them into narratives that resonate with contemporary audiences. By exploring these cross-cultural interpretations of Shinong, we gain new perspectives on the enduring relevance and universal appeal of Chinese mythology in the modern world. The Jade Emperor The Jade Emperor commands the celestial realm with wisdom, authority, and benevolence. Through millennia of storytelling, religious practice, and cultural expression, the Jade Emperor has become a central figure in Chinese folklore, shaping beliefs, rituals, and societal norms. To understand the significance of the Jade Emperor within Chinese mythology, it is essential to explore the historical and cultural context in which these myths originated. Chinese mythology has its roots in ancient shamanic practices, animistic beliefs, and oral traditions dating back thousands of years. These early cosmological concepts evolved over time, influenced by interactions with neighboring cultures, such as those of the Indus Valley and Central Asia. By the time of the Shang and Zhou dynasties, 1600 to 256 BCE, these disparate myths and legends coalesced into a more structured belief system, incorporating elements of ancestor worship, nature spirits, and celestial deities. The precise origins of the Jade Emperor remain shrouded in the mists of time, with multiple theories proposed by scholars, and historians. Some suggest that he emerged from indigenous Chinese beliefs surrounding the worship of celestial forces and nature spirits. Others point to the syncretism of Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism as influential factors in shaping his character and attributes. Regardless of his origins, the Jade Emperor gradually ascended to prominence during the Han Dynasty, 206 BCE, 220 CE, as Taoist cosmology became more established and codified. As the supreme ruler of the celestial realm, the Jade Emperor embodies the quintessence of cosmic order, wisdom, and virtue. He is depicted as a regal and majestic figure, adorned in resplendent robes and a luminous jade crown symbolizing his divine status. Endowed with omniscience, omnipotence, and immortality, the Jade Emperor presides over a vast pantheon of celestial beings, directing their actions and overseeing the affairs of both heaven and earth. His benevolence and impartiality are legendary, as he dispenses justice, grants blessings, and ensures the harmonious functioning of the cosmos. Within the celestial hierarchy, the Jade Emperor occupies the highest position, with a complex bureaucracy of celestial officials and deities serving under him. These divine beings are organized into various ranks and departments, each entrusted with specific duties and responsibilities. Among the most prominent celestial entities are the four heavenly kings, who serve as guardians of the four cardinal directions, and the twelve divine generals, who lead celestial armies in defense against malevolent forces. The heavenly bureaucracy mirrors earthly governance, with departments overseeing matters such as weather, fertility, and the passage of souls. Throughout Chinese mythology, the Jade Emperor figures prominently in a plethora of legends, 
fables and allegories that illustrate his divine nature and interactions with other celestial beings. One of the most famous tales involving the Jade Emperor is the myth of the Great Race, which explains the origins of the Chinese zodiac. According to legend, the Jade Emperor organized a race among 12 animals, with the order of their finish determining their place in the zodiac cycle. Another well-known story is the tale of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, who challenges the authority of the Jade Emperor and embarks on a series of adventures that ultimately lead to his enlightenment and redemption. The reverence for the Jade Emperor extends far beyond the realm of mythology, permeating every aspect of Chinese culture and society. His image is ubiquitous in religious iconography, art, literature, and popular culture where he is often depicted presiding over the heavenly court or bestowing blessings upon devotees. Moreover, the values embodied by the Jade Emperor wisdom, justice, compassion serve as moral exemplars for individuals and communities alike, guiding behavior and fostering social harmony. Festivals dedicated to the Jade Emperor, such as the ninth day of the Lunar New Year, are celebrated with fervent devotion and elaborate rituals symbolizing the enduring bond between heaven and earth. Devotion to the Jade Emperor is widespread across China and among overseas Chinese communities, where temples dedicated to his worship abound. These sacred sites serve as focal points for religious observance, offering devotees a place to pay homage, seek guidance, and express gratitude for blessings received. Rituals dedicated to the Jade Emperor vary according to regional customs and traditions, but often involve offerings of incense, food, and prayers. The ninth day of the Lunar New Year, also known as Tikong Dan, is a particularly auspicious occasion for worship, marked by elaborate ceremonies and processions to honor the Jade Emperor and other celestial deities. In contemporary times, the figure of the Jade Emperor continues to captivate the imagination of people across China and beyond. His timeless appeal is evident in various forms of cultural expression, including literature, theater, film, and television. Modern reinterpretations of ancient myths and legends often feature the Jade Emperor as a central character, imbued with new layers of symbolism and meaning that resonate with contemporary audiences. Moreover, the enduring popularity of Taoist beliefs and practices ensures that the legacy of the Jade Emperor remains vibrant and relevant in the modern world. Thank you for watching this video from beginning up to here. Thank you and see you in next episode.